Good evening, everyone. This is the Tana Monroe Planning Board meeting. Um, today's date is August 8th. We are starting at 7 o'clock, um, and it is 4 after 7. Um, our new time for, start for these meetings for the regular meeting and the workshop meeting will be 7 o'clock. Um, let's start the meeting um, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right. So um, the fire exits are at the front entrance that we all come through, and then <coughs> to the side of it down the hallway, and then one as well behind me. Uh, my understanding is that there's a town board meeting going on as well behind me to the extent anyone is watching this and planning to attend. Well, we're not live streaming, are we? No. No, so no one's watching. Hopefully, um, they'll just go around. But yeah, it's behind me. Um, you know, I think we decided on the 7 o'clock meeting time, the last meeting, right? Yes. yes. Word was here, right? Yes. Good. Because I was... I Word's pulling in, I saw. Oh, good. I hate that I, if we forgot to tell him, but I thought he was here. having so. trouble finding a parking space. It could be. Yeah, it's a little busy out there. All right, so um, first up on our agenda is Mikva Yisrael. Do we have anyone from, I know we do, I see him back there, great. Good evening, Isaac, Put your appearance on for the, for the record, please. Isaac Walter, the project manager. Okay, all right, Isaac. This is uh, the Mikvi Israel site plan amendment. Um, I have up on the screen the last version of the resolution of approval that I had, which I think is correct. Mark, Mike, this is the August 4th version. That's the last one, right? I'm not sure when you printed it. Yeah, it's it's it. okay. That sounds right. That's last Friday. Yeah. I think it is. Is that in the packets? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, it's attached. Got it. Okay, we're, we're so organized I didn't even know. All right, good. Terrific. Maureen, thank you. Thank All you. right. Did it top to bottom this week. Great. Packet also, we have the um, Mark's most recent comment letter as well as the letter from Sherry Torah Inc., which I guess is the neighboring property. This was the letter we requested from your neighboring, from your neighbor, um, authorizing um, the owner of this property, Miriam Goldberger, to plant trees and shrubs on the property. Um, so, and Mark. Did you get a copy of that? I know the yes, just came in. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so maybe we turn to Mark's comment letter. <coughs> One is really just introductory about the history. Two just reminds us and reminds the applicant that we will continue to wait for the overall school master plan. Uh, three, there are a set of revision plans prepared. I had the opportunity to look at them on the computer. Uh, revision set uh, nine. So they've addressed some of the comments, but my suggestion is is that you uh, ad adopt, as Mike always includes it in his resolutions, conditioned on my comments. They will be dated tonight. And under four, I've got the five items the board's been speaking about, which one, the sewer note, which in fact is on revision nine already. The uh, right turn restriction for egress from the site's northeast curb cut to Forest Avenue, which is on the site plan highway superintendent would just have to write off on the specific sign before installation. That's not a big deal. Uh, they have, they tried to meet your requirement for the plannings. The plan does not match what we talked about, which is a double row uh, of junipers and arbovites. The planting being 10 foot on center and six feet between the rows. So that double staggered row has to be corrected on the plan. What'd they do? They have a single row. Okay. So I quit after I saw a single row. I figured yeah, they, sure. they had to fix it anyway. Okay. But no big deal. Uh, the other item the board had asked at the last meeting was that you include, or they include a note indicating that the rooftop uh, playground fence 
would blend uh, with the parapet wall in the building. So it would be a complementary color or match. So I'll make sure that note is on the plans. Last but not least, the final set that John submits for stamp of approval should have the approval boxes where we historically get those so that you can see them on the folded plans with the project number on the approval box so that they are properly filed and easy to file in the future if they get uh, mm -hmm. uh, separated from the official file. So those are extremely simple corrections, uh, two of which, I'll say two and a half, have been made. Uh, I'm sure John Atzel can take care of that, so my recommendation is that you include my comment four by reference in Mike's resolution, and, and we can make sure those are correct when they come in for stamp of approval. But they've complied with everything else that we've asked for. Okay. So that means that the resolution that we're looking at now, while it has the dates of the last revision date is June 16th, it won't have – will we have the opportunity to be able to update that so that it matches well, the revision what date What will happen is get? Mark's Mark's letter will give the new revision dates after he's reviewed it. Yeah. What will happen is you'll adopt a resolution – relative to the pl last plans you received. Yeah, which is June 16th. And they have to correct those plans, so they will get a new revision date, and my memo to the, the chairperson will say, revision 10, dated whatever, complies with all the conditions of approval. Can't, can't then we, in the drawing section, um, say that? As, as part well, of the form. we won't know what date they're going to have on I know, them. but as part of the form, can't we have, after the list of drawings, a, a statement that says further plans um, will be submitted by the applicant, um, which well, the date of such plans will be reflected in Mark's comment letter? Something sure. like that? In condition number one, it envisions it, but I'll put a footnote by last revision date. The plan set will be updated as reported in Mark's letter. Yeah, anytime your approval will be a conditional approval, they'll have a revision date. I want to have a new date on it just so we can tell the difference. Yeah, I'm just saying under se under the drawing section where it's got the list, can't, can't we just have at the end, see Mark's comment letter dated such and such for the last revision date of the plans? That makes sense. Probably easier. And I can just put a, a footnote at last revision date so it will be on the bottom. Or I yeah, can put it in the paragraph below. As whichever. long as it sort of tracks to the drawing section. Yep. That would be great. I'll add that. Okay, cool. All right, so that seems pretty... Pretty limited, your, your comments. And and you're not going to update this note, this comment. This is it. This is it. Okay. This uh, Mike references my comment sheet from tonight in the resolution, so it will carry forward. Okay. I only have two things. Condition 11 um, reports an amount for an inspection fee. And I don't know if we have that amount yet or whether Mark's prepared to give it. The other one is 13. I will verbatim uh, add traffic movements at the northeast curb cut to Forest Avenue shall be limited to right turn out only. Wait, I'm sorry, where was that? Uh, condition 13 on the bottom of, I guess, page 6. I wasn't sure what <coughs> intersection it was that had that limited, but I see it in Mark's memo. So okay, I'll position 13 uh, is I've the age 14. of students. I must be looking. I have a 14. Yeah, let's make sure we're all on the right one. Okay, hang on. Thank you. Okay. What's the date of yours? Well, mine was August, August 2nd, but those are print dates. Oh, so, okay. So it's condition 14. All right, you sure we have the right one? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm looking at it now. The other condition is 11. Well, a fee in the amount of blank shall be posted before the plans are signed to cover review and construction inspections. So, Mark, you would have to answer that. Yeah, I'll have to speak with Ryan Nugent to verify what formula they're using. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you may want to fee in an amount to be determined by the town board. Is it actually by resolution of the town board, or is it just something? To, I mean, well, I it's an inspection fee, so it's not necessarily bonding. But we'll say it's determined by the town attorney or town board <coughs> on the okay. recommendation make it, of make the it engineer. Town, town attorney or town board. That way, we don't have to go through right. the whole town board process if we don't have to. Okay, and 12, the date of the narrative has to go in. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Is this the 
the one where I gave you a bunch of revisions last time? Isn't this the one? This one, I think, was, I don't think there's been last any week. Revisions, no, revisions last I week. I had a bunch of markups I sent them like several weeks ago. Has anyone remember at last, me last, last week's meeting, I had gone through a resolution and had a bunch of revisions? Was it this one? I have mine from yeah, August was. first. I don't know what else it would have been. Including, like, I don't know if it was this one. I had for my notes from that meeting where we added sewer force main in condition number four. Uh huh. What was then condition number four? We, we took the language from what was then condition 10 that had to do with um, the inspection fees and put it in condition number yeah. six. So I made this those changes. It. Yeah, so I think you, yeah, so, okay, so we don't have that revision, do we? Yeah, it's That's in this, this one. Okay, so the narrative date was one of the revisions? I don't know how I missed that one, but it's in there now. I just grabbed And then it being attached, is it attached? And attached no, to this no, resolution? No, I will attach Good. it. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, just get the date in there. And I'm, I think probably because you're waiting for someone to tell you what the date of that was. Yeah. Yeah, it would be helpful if I if you could send that to me as a PDF. Okay. The most recent narrative with the date on it, and then I'll, I'll combine this resolution with that PDF. The same thing for the, uh, there's a variance decision that we'll need to attach as well. It's a narrative dated February 7th, 2017, modified on March 6th, 2017. I'm going to forward this to you. Does that sound about right to you, Isaac? What? Yeah. <laughs> the narrative that I have here is February 7th, 2017, modified March 6th, 2017. Makes sense. Just, well, you're guessing. Just write that down and confirm that for me. I'm gonna I'm going to forward this to Mike and I'm gonna copy you and you're gonna confirm. I believe this is it though. I don't have one since March. Isaac, are you Isaac 5297? Okay. okay. All right. Actually, in that email, I say, is this the most recent version? And you respond, yes. So I think it is. Okay. All right. Did anyone have any changes to the resolution in its current form? We have an age for yeah. number 13. The age of the students attending school shall not exceed blank years. So, Isaac, what it says, let me just get it up for you. If I could figure this out, hold on. Oh, that's a comment letter. Shoot. Hold on. I've got it here somewhere. The age of the students attending school shall not exceed blank years without amended approval from the planning board. I will get it to the mic. We, we, need, yeah, to, we, we need to know. Okay. I think you mentioned it the other night. I, I, I don't have it written down, but I thought you did. Oh, maybe you said the same thing. Did you get back? Yeah, no, I think you were supposed to get back to us. Um, hmm. And do we want the age or the grade? More so the grade, right? 
Well, yes. Um, and that's a Mark's comment letter. The master plan was in the comment letter. Um, but now, so Isaac, what you submitted to me was that I haven't read it yet. Did you submit to me what you were hoping was the master plan? No, I was okay. submitting the easement. Ah, okay. So we still haven't gotten that. So the ages, my understanding was, let's think about this. So the young girls from the trailers were going to go over to the mikvah. To the mikvah, and their ages are what nursery and kindergarten. Nursery, kindergarten, yeah, mostly, yeah. Okay, but. Okay, and so that happens until Glenwood 2 is built, right? The second Glenwood building. Then they're going to go there. Then the boys, the overflow of the boys that are Can in the trailers are going to go. So how old would those, are they going to be the young boys Also again? Mexican, they are. Right. So really the mikvah should be probably very young, which was our point because the playground was going to be designed for the younger kids so they can't climb over the wall. And also we need to, they need to leave at the latest 3.15. Right. So, so only it'd be nursery kindergarten is leaving uh, at that time. So it would be fair to say probably um, nursery grade. kindergarten, or I think we can probably go by grade, don't you think? Yeah. Grade might be better than age. I don't know how they structure the grades. Yeah, how do you structure your grades? Do you do nursery kindergarten first, second? How do you um, do that? Let me get back to Mike tomorrow morning because I want to make sure what I answered. Well, here's the thing. If you want us to vote on this tonight, I kind of need to know only because if you came back to Mike and said, well, it's up to sixth grade, well, now you're coming back because we have to discuss it. Okay, so let me check what, uh, what we write in the Yeah, I don't know what their right. age uh, yeah. what we consider kindergarten. Yeah. So you might want to just get some feedback on that. Okay, give me a minute. Okay. All right, is there anything else in here? Any blanks? So we did the theme. Mike, yep. you got your, you've got your language for 14? 14 was... Your traffic movement. Take yes. my turn. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question on 15. Um, earlier we had said that John Journey, the highway department, was going to check on the sign, So, it, but Ben also has to make sure it complies with the, the town code, the sign. Isn't that, no, is, the is, sign, is that 15? The sign is different? traffic issues, so that'll be just John. All right. right. So, so 15, do we need 15? It's, and it's in Mark's comment letter. Let's see. The signs. Or is this a different sign that we're talking about? Is this like a sign saying this is the school? I don't really know what sign it was, but... You may want to take 15 and and uh, remove the reference to signs and just indicate that the design of the rooftop uh, playground must comply with the... I think we have if, I if I recall correctly, though, I thought we did say with the sign we wanted it like we had it at um, Larkin. It's going to have some English saying, you know, what it is. Well, maybe it's the it's the sign, not the traffic sign, but the actual uh -huh. uh, facility sign. Facility sign. So maybe I we should note it as yeah. a facility sign. That, that's probably what it is. You're right, I think Mary. it's the facility sign, and I think we wanted, you know, they can yep. put their Yiddish on there, but we wanted some English that was visible and actually not For emergency services. Tiny. Right. With, with the name of what it is. Um, okay, that's probably what that was from. Okay, I just want so to I'll clarify. Add, this approval is not intended to constitute an approval of the facility sign shown on the plans which must comply with code entered to be approved by the building inspector. And then add, uh, lettering must also be in English. But the sign must include um, English translation of the facility name and address? Well, I guess usually Yeah, name. facility name and address. Name and address. But that's not, we don't have plans for the sign. No, but this will re make it clear that it's required. Yeah, okay, and that's the point. something to work from. Right, and your comment and your letter pertain to the signage for the right turn. Correct. Yeah, yeah, this is different. All right, everyone, you think I'm right? I think I'm right. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay, anything else, guys, for us? Oh, your officers, uh, officers, offers of dedication, that question. Hold on. I did get an email today, and it looks like it may have been offered, but we have to check with Brian Nugent, so I think we should just leave it in there to get a sign-off letter from him. There was a letter earlier today. I wasn't sure if it was Glenwood or this, but you sent her the offer of dedication for Forrest. Did you? I thought that yeah, was... Yeah, I, th I think that was... Was that Glenwood? 
I thought that was Glenwood. I think it was an easement on Glenwood I thought it was to, to serve to serve Mikvah Yisrael, which we have to review that. You and did we get need that? Another letter after that. All right, hold on. Came from Bruce Stern. Was I on that? It was very uncertain as to what it was. Give me a minute. Okay, hold on. You forwarded that to me. Did I? Yeah. I think you're best to leave that as a condition of approval, and that way gives us a okay. chance to review the meets and bounds, review the content of the easement, make sure that it's 100% correct. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it, but doesn't mean... All right. Anything else, guys? Okay. So I suppose we're, we're at the point where we can make a motion to approve to, well, a motion for condition, conditional final approval based on this resolution as amended, as we've been discussing. And you, need the, you need the age to insert. That's the only open idea. Yes, you still need the age. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Well, and I don't think we should do ages. I think we should do grades. Yeah, don't you think? yeah that's why I'm trying to find out. Yeah, ages is sure. too difficult. Just tell us, you know, grades, nursery through, whatever, and then as long as we don't go <coughs> past first grade, I think we're probably comfortable. What age is it? What age is first grade? Right, six or seven. Well, it's, they may be different, though. Their community may be different. He's right. We don't know. For us, usually six. Six is like first kindergarten first is five, yeah. right? Uh -huh. right. First grade is six. Seven. Seven is second. So if you so made it not to exceed age six, it. Uh, well, we should probably do both then. Grades with year approximate years five through, you know, just in case. The community may be different. He's checking. Okay. Okay. I'm going to suggest that you make your call. Um, you're also Glenwood, but you're on the phone. So let's have Malik Stern jump in while you're making your call, and then we'll table you, and you can come back when Malik Stern's done. Okay? Okay. Great. Okay, good. Malik Stern, you're up. Hello. Hello. Just put your appearance in for the record, please. Uh, I'm Lucy Conley from Lankin Tully Engineering. Uh, I'm here for John Queenan. Very good. And this is the Malik Stern application, what we call Malik Stern, um, Abraham Malik, the owner. And this look, this is the one located off of Ninja Road. Nice to put a face to the name, Lucy. Okay, let me see if I can find you. All right. So Malik Stern. <coughs> <coughs> All right, Malik Stern, we have a proposed, we have a proposed resolution that Mike prepared. Um, okay. That's the old letter. Yeah. But it was asked to be put in the packet when he was okay. coming last time, so I just included it. Okay, good. <coughs> All right. And then we have Mike's Mark's comment letter, which I think should still be up there somewhere, but I'm not really sure how to get to it, so we're just going to bring it up again. Uh, and you should have a PDF of the site plan. Okay. Hold on. <coughs> I'm challenged. Which way? Uh, All right. Now, so we booted you from the last agenda. Because we were, we had not, we had not been able to send the plans to the Orange County DPW, and so we wanted to at least get them into them. That was done in mid July, July seven around, right? July seventh. July seventh. So, and we have not heard from them. You've not heard from them. Correct. Um, but Mark, Mark and I, well, by email, we we corresponded with Mark, and he felt comfortable in recommending, I guess, this board that we we. Um, proceed with the resolution with the condition of you getting the Orange County DPW approval. 
Right. Um, let me just pull up his comment letter because I think they're all in one. Mm -hmm. They are, and just as an update, after uh, this was added, as as you know, to the agenda late, so they, I drafted up some comments, and then after having submitted the comments to the board, had our staff identify that in fact there was an updated set of plans that had not been put in file yet. Two of the three comments have already been addressed by John Cleanan. Uh, so really, the only condition that is left is the Orange County DPW approval for the curb cut and the uh, no parking signs. John has added the standard lighting note to the plans and he has added a, a note restricting uh, use of the storage in the basement mm -hmm. and in the attic relative to storage for those businesses that are uh, that occupy the building. So they can't rent out storage space to a third party in other words. So John has address that in the uh, plans that are last revised July 5th 2017 so as a correction I will just tell you that uh, the only open item that remains is the Orange County DPW which uh, obviously they're waiting as we are to hear back okay. right that set of plans was created to respond um, to your remaining comments and um, the comments we got in late June from DPW. Okay. Did we have a public meeting on this one? A public hearing on this Public one? hearing was held June on 13. June 13th. Oh, that's why. Because I wasn't here. Right. Okay. Right. <coughs> okay. I've started noting on my comments where I list the dates. That's good. The date of the public hearing, so that might help if you, you need the date. Did we... Um, get a revised narrative. Can anyone answer that question for me? <coughs> I think we did. This is from July 5th. No, the, the, the narrative good. itself. Because we, we wanted to make sure the narrative would be revised to add the restriction that um, that the attic storage. is storage only, or utilities, I think we said. narrative I have is April 18th yeah they didn't revise yeah. it that's the one uh, I'm looking at as well. yeah I think what they did was they actually added the restrictive the restrictive note on it right on the plans and what does it say I think the note language it's, is in it is yeah the resolution itself and the bullets under two okay and it's note six on the front of the plans. Proposed building shall be used as a leasable office on the first and second floors. The basement and attic floor shall only be used to serve as tenant storage and shall not be utilized as additional leasable area. It is anticipated that the basement shall serve as storage for the first floor tenants and the attic shall serve as storage for the second floor tenants. So that is note six on the cover sheet what was what was the comment regarding the non-functional attic dormers at one point in time in the early yeah. discussions you had said if they were going to be dormers you wanted to make sure they didn't function but then when you move to allowing storage sunlight made so. sense and the restriction replaced that so I'm, I'm taking that comment out and removing that condition number okay and our standard lighting note is on the lighting plan now so those those two issues I believe John has addressed acceptably. So I will insert the plan set information. At this point, since it was a moving target, I didn't insert. I will keep condition one, which is a sign off letter from Mark using the date of his memo as August 8th, just as a final check. Condition number two stays. Condition number three will become our standard narrative condition with the narrative dated April 18th, and uh, we, will, we will have it attached. Four relates to the Department of Public Works. Five relates to the need to have Department of Health approval. Six will note the variances and attach them. 
and the, the dates of them were recited. The uh, placeholder number seven will be removed. Eight is your standard condition, as is condition nine. I'm sorry, say that regarding seven? Uh, seven, I'm just removing. Oh, okay, I, I'm I just usually keep a placeholder there to make notes of meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, our understanding is that five has been satisfied. Condition five? I usually keep it here just as a checklist right. to make sure we, we, we have it by right. the time we submit the plans for signature. So if you right. have it, great. So we have, uh, we've submitted the letter from the health department um, previously right. uh, for that. This helps us as a checklist yep. so we right. know it there. before it's signed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so what oh, will yeah. happen is what, after this is already, you know, approved and filed by the town clerk, before I go to sign the plans, they, uh, Noreen will put together an approval package for me. The filed resolution will be part of it, and Mike will actually, in the comments, in, in, the, col in the column, say for each condition whether it's been satisfied or not. Right. And that, and that actually gets as part of our file. Mm -hmm. So I have that, and that tells me I can sign the plan. So that's why we'll leave it there. Right. And then he'll be able to say, yes, this was satisfied, and your, that letter will be part of the approval. Okay. Package. Just wanted to make sure the letter was what you were looking for. Great. Yeah. No, I'm looking for the narratives still. I don't, I don't know. Lucy said there is not one newer than April 18th. I don't even have the April 18th, but no. it's not just not coming up in my email. It could just be someplace else. It's all a matter of how organized I am with my email, so, you know. They, they all fit in that phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, somewhere in the cloud, right? All right, any, any other changes or issues with this? I was not, you know, I have to rely on you guys. I was not around, I think, the last time we really heard from these guys. So, I mean, really, the last notes I have. So, M Mark, you're says for the lighting on the building. Right. So, enters in the standard lighting note. Okay. Effectively, they are 100% complete other than the county DPW mm -hmm. on, on my end. I don't have the plans in front of me, but is there room um, on that site to meet the requirements that uh, that is discussed with the uh, Orange County D DPW letter? As far as the radius? As far as the uh, the entrance? You mean the old letter? This was the original the, letter. The June? Right. June 26th. Right. Uh, as I recall, the comments had to do with the uh, the, turn, the curb radius and, and right. the like. I have, the, I have a plan. Right, the radius of the curb, the uh, clearing for Can sight distance. I've got that too. Um, Gary, if they can't satisfy those concerns, they, they don't have an approval. <laughs> they won't get an approval. Okay, well, I'm just. I see. Um, we, we increased the, we responded to those comments by increasing the radius at the entrance, the radii, as much as we could. And uh, we rearranged the parking uh, somewhat. and. The building is a, a bit smaller the to respond. The, the building is a bit smaller. smaller. Hmm. You don't hear that every day. <laughs> is, that, is that here? Am I looking at the right thing here? Screen. Oh, yes. And you might want to look on my computer. It might be easier. All right. Does you want a paper copy? Yeah. Did they not submit one for everybody? They only sent four. Let me do that. You and I see. grabbed them as I was running out of the office. Yeah. Mary, you want one? You need to submit Thank 12. <laughs> be helpful. <coughs> All right. <coughs> okay. All right, you want to point out what you were saying, Lucy? Feel free to get up. You want to grab your microphone and just, okay. yeah, there you go. So the main comment was that, um, that is this on? Yes. Okay. The main comment was to increase these radius, these two radiuses as much as possible, which we did. And in doing that, we had to increase, we had to change this a bit in the parking area 
Um, the other comments related to signage and they're on, it, on the county sheets along um, along uh, Ninja Road. So I'm sorry, you said you changed the radius and that caused what? We, it, we had to move things back. And so in moving th things back, the building got smaller. You know, it's these three, these three parking spaces are recessed to, mm -hmm. uh, to allow more room to access the loading area. Okay. Nothing else changed? No. <coughs> and your signage, your signage along Where's Ninja signage? Road, is it located over here? Um, they're on the county sheet, um, which is sheet right that. six, I think. They didn't put it on. Yeah, there are no parking signs. No there parking. are no parking between signs and driveway ahead or something like that. Yeah, it was that. like 300. Like 495. Is that right? Uh, I think the sign the signs are on the next sheet over here. Hmm. Yeah, they're they're down here. <laughs> Did I get it? Yep. Almost there we go. There we go. Right, right here. That's as far as I'm going. So they go out. Um, oh, I see. About almost 600 feet in each direction, and then um, so there's quite a few no parking between sign signs. How much is that space? What's that distance between? I can't see the numbers. So uh, this is 175, 175, 175. Um, each each side, and these are 200. Right, I so think it's exactly what uh, Mike Carroll said, more or less, on uh, distance. And then the, an additional sign, um, where's the, oh, right here, the, okay. the driveway ahead sign, and here. <coughs> so you have no parking signs on both sides? Of yes. The What's the date of these plans? July 5th. Okay. And that's what was sent to the county? Yes. Okay. And so we're waiting. All right. Any other comments? No? All right. Any other changes on the resolution? Mike, you've got everything you need? I think so. And you've I will got need that narrative and zoning decision, but I'll work with Noreen. I'm sorry, say that again? I'll need a copy of the narrative and the zoning decision to make sure I'm using the right ones, but I'll work with Noreen. Okay. Yeah, you guys just copy me on those emails, so I'm yep. in there. Um, all right. So we need a motion. Yeah? Anyone? Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Are you guys just folding, or do you have issues? Okay. Other than folding issues. Anyone want to make a motion to, I guess, uh, grant site plan approval? Yep, for, for the site plan approval, subject to the resolution of approval as uh, amended at, well. As amended at this meeting. As amended at this meeting. Uh, okay, I just made the motion. I'll second. Very good. Anthony? Aye. 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 Okay. You're done. You're free. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. Now, figure out where my mouse is. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, um, Isaac, are you ready to go for which one? Do I finish up Mikva? Okay. Let's do that. So what'd you find out? Um, it's going to be there from three to six years. Three to six years old, and that's what uh, that's nursery. the first grade. nursery, kindergarten, and preschool. Okay. It's three ages till the first grade. Okay, so nursery, kindergarten, no, Pre and preschool. Yes. What's preschool? What? What's preschool? It's before kindergarten, before first grade. So it's. After. Oh, it's after kindergarten. Is yes. it before kindergarten or after kindergarten? After, after kindergarten. Oh, before kindergarten. 
I think it's usually nursery, preschool, nursery, me too. preschool kindergarten. kindergarten. That's what I yeah. think too. Yeah. Okay. So that's Mike. Can we do that? Can we say nursery, pre, pre K, or preschool and kindergarten ages three Not through two. six? Okay. Nursery, pre K. No, pre preschool. preschool. I think you said preschool and kindergarten. Approximate ages three through six. Okay. What else was there? Was there anything else? I think that was no, it. No, I think that's the only thing you were waiting for. All right. Who wants to make the motion? I'll make that motion. All right. For site plan approvals, subject to the resolution of approval submitted by Mike as amended tonight. Anthony made the motion. I'll second that. Lisa? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Moving along to Glenwood to appearances please well, let's look at Kirk up here first A comment letter from, I'm sorry, appearances, please. Kirk Walter. Isaac Walter. Okay. Uh, Glenwood uh, site plan amendment for the second school building. We've got a comment letter from Mark. And, right, I, I appreciate that, Kirk, you submitted some um, information that you got regarding um, state guidance on playgrounds. Uh, the gentleman from the school district called me back the day after. <laughs> Figures, right? That's good. You at least heard from him. I figured I'd pass along the information that he gave to me. Okay. Let's see. Let's just see what's a logical approach here. All right. Did the board have um, the opportunity to review? What Kirk submitted on, um, you know, the guidelines from the on the, from the state on the playgrounds. I know, I had Noreen forward it to all of you. It's also in your packets. It's the email dated August second. Anyone have any questions on that? Any, um, or does anyone need to look at it now? It's helpful. It is helpful. <coughs> Is there any discussion? Anyone want to um, discuss anything further about the playground? Nope. Nope, okay. I'll put my notes here and make sure I don't have anything. I think I do. So Mark, your comment letter seemed to be pretty limited to me, and we've got Kirk's August 4th letter um, where he submits the revised plans and addresses some of your prior comments. So Mark, why don't you take it from there? Sure. As uh, the board's aware, last week there were some open items you had requested. Uh, if Kirk could have the plans revised uh, and asked if I could get the plans turned around for tonight's meeting, both were accomplished. Kirk issued a set of plans uh, uh, actually I don't think you added a revision date on this that says July 18th I think July 18th yeah. that's but the right date I didn't give them to until August 4th okay so it was a delayed delivery <laughs> so but July 18th then 2017 is the latest plans those plans uh, successfully addressed all the open comments I had uh, the only item which is more of a universal issue is one of ensuring that 
the wetland markers that are on the final plan submitted for stamping match the board's policy until that is uh, incorporated into the town's local law uh, that it matches the policy. And I've uh, distributed tonight what I believe was the last proposed requirements, and I have shared that with Kirk in case the board says yes, that'll at minimum work for this application and can be further refined. Kirk could uh, have the plans conform to that uh, that guideline. Do I have updated plans in my system, PDF? No, I did not submit new plans to the board. Bad. Okay. But Mark's got them. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much just detail-related. Okay. A couple details that just need to be cleaned up, and that's okay. been done. All right. My question is, with the plan set, um, with the wetland markers, these are going to be installed at the wetland boundary because we don't have the new ones yet, so th this is still going to follow the old one of follow of being placed at the wetlands boundary, not the we wetland about, buffer? I think buffer. we talked about the buffer. We buffer. talked about We buffer. are, okay, all right. The only thing that's different is the decal, which is the picture that I asked Noreen to to put up because... It's in your packet. Yeah, um, the right, current it. decal that the town was using, it Who's says land below this marker is um, register wetland, all land disturbances below and within 100 feet upland mm -hmm. but we we don't want to say that anymore no. so we'd have to get new decals so that might be the only thing that uh, I think would have to be addressed okay again the deep we can we can have Kirk revise it to indicate that the sticker on the carbonate marker will be town standard be the generic and that way we'll but make the town sure standards that wrong is what she's saying so we have to yeah. have it changed but it also is inconsistent with what I wrote because I didn't have this. Right. So we just need to make sure we get a final version for everyone. Right. Yeah. Where Where is what you added to the resolution on wetland? Uh, eight. Well, there's two things. Seven is during construction, we wanted the wetlands to be marked with construction fencing. And then before the CO, the markers. Accordance, in accordance with planning board policies, which is the written document we've been referring to. So it's condition it seven attached? and eight. Shouldn't it be attached? We can do that. I suppose, though, if the policy changes. Well, I think we could use this and just edit the bottom paragraph with the, uh, remove the 100 feet because it will actually be the buffer. Mm -hmm. So I can rework that and we can have that for the next meeting. I just like something attached to this, so it's probably we're better not, not to attach it because it's a moving target. It is moving, but yeah, so that it's whatever the me. policy is at the time when we finalize it. Okay. So I think it's better to leave it out. Okay. Everyone's good with that. Yeah. Just the point is, if it turns out that you can mark the buffer, then the sign goes at the buffer. Well, that's what if we're asking. That's what we're hoping for the this policy to be. This is asking for buffer marking. Yeah. We so we're not. Buffer. We're not being. Um, we're not being exact about. If it's going to be at the buffer or at the actual wetland delineated area. But no, we are. Both these conditions seven and eight refer to the wetland buffer, buffer edge. <laughs> yeah, we are being specific because we want it at the buffer, not at the wetland boundary. And that's what we're hoping the policy will be. Or that's currently the policy. Well, so. hopefully at the next meeting <clears throat> we'll circulate a revised, revised version mm -hmm. and then adopt the policy and we'll get the wording correct. And. Um, we can actually get a hold of Carsonite before we're all done, and they can issue a new standard sticker with a part number. Okay. You know, what I will do on the plan that we prepared that Mark has shows the fence at the buffer. We show proposed signage at the buffer. I used a sign detail that the DEC had had me use in the past. So I just need to revise that sign detail. And what I will do is I will just say uh, to conform to the latest revised Town of Monroe wetland sign standard or something to that yeah. effect. The sign itself, the, <clears throat> the marker that I reference is fine. It's the sticker that's now going to change. And I guess since the Carsonite markers are actually in the buffer, if we get the stickers later or the decals later, do, or can they be affixed later? 
or do they go on at the manufacturer on the markers? No, I think they're sticking on. They could be put okay, on. Okay, so they could be put on later if it's if it changes again. And the, yeah. by the resolution, the markers are not going up till just before CO, so there is time. Well, the, this one we wanted, I believe, the markers. Now we're going to start putting the markers in before. Yeah, we didn't want it as yeah. CO. We wanted it I earlier. thought you wanted construction fencing. That's what I had on this in my particular, notes. On this particular situation, construction fence was fine. The markers, once they're ready to go, can be put on because if they're not going to be close to yeah. you, even close to the buffer. Okay. If so you don't need the construction case, fencing, then we'll, we'll... If we take other other projects where they're running equipment very close to that buffer, there may be an issue. Yeah, I thought we wanted it before CO because we were concerned about yeah, construction so disturbance. Yeah, before CO. But I guess so you're saying the fencing might take care of that, we wouldn't need the markers? No, I meant oh. if Sorry. you don't put the markers up until before CO, at the time of construction, they can go park a backhoe out yeah. there and not know. So it's... What I thought we had discussed was we're going to put up that orange construction fencing at the buffer during construction. Uh -huh. When construction is done and before a CO is issued, then we put up the markers. I think that what we may want to do in the final version of the policy is actually adopt some signs that go on to the construction fencing, a similar wording that it is a restricted area. Have that as part of the construction operation. And then when the construction fence and the temporary signs get taken down, the permanent markers get put in. That might be the best way. That'll protect them. Right? I agree. And the markers won't get hurt during construction then? Yeah. That okay. we'll have nice, fresh, new markers after they tear down the fence. Well, but I'll work on an update. But for Thanks. this one, we can leave the conditions the way yeah. they are. When yeah. we finalize the policy, it'll, it'll you know, be self-effectuating. I'll coordinate with Mary before the next meeting. We'll have something that hopefully that addresses both construction and the permanent marker. All right, so then the way you've got it worded here. I'll leave it. Construction fencing during construction before yep. CO markers. In both cases at the wetland buffer edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it pretty much stays, right? Fine. Yep. <coughs> And the uh, Section 5, the variance of decisions, you're going to insert Dated. the dates yep. once we you get them. Yep. Okay. Can I go through the resolution beyond that? There's yeah. the plan set, and I will include the footnote just in case the plans get changed at all by a report letter in terms Please. of the revision date, but it looks like it's currently uh, July 18th. Okay. Under public improvements, there's always the two versions. One is if there's enough public improvements that requires a public improvement security agreement. I don't think that's what we need in this case. Mark? No, I don't believe so. So instead, we use the or, uh, which we don't need because we don't need to list them because there's nothing beyond dedicated improvements. Here, can you just hold on one second? Yeah. What kind of public improvements are we talking about here? Does anybody have a copy that I could take a look at? Well, there's a list the resolution? of them. Noreen, uh, do you have a copy for that? Loop Road. Loop Road. Airmail. <laughs> I was never very good at that. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to the wetland marker issue. Guys? Yeah. I'm only because Mary and Gary have an issue. Are you, well, are you good? We, we were just clarifying that it is the outside buffer ridge. What? Yes. The, the fencing and then eventually the markers. Yeah, that's what yeah. else would it be? That's correct. And we, okay. That is the way we have it shown on the plan. That's, that's what I understood too. Yeah, it could okay. Be. Could be the edge between the wetland and the. Oh, no, the no. No, we want it on the outer bu right, buffer. That's edge. why mm -hmm. we were talking about Outlining the actual buffer, the we, outside buffer. We have yes. the orange construction fence and the ultimate wetland signage 100 feet away from the edge of the actual right. wetland. Otherwise, it would be actually marking the wetland right. boundary. Right. Right. That right. would make sense. We want that's the wetland the buffer boundary. I'll add the adjective outside. Right. Each okay. Position. Good. All right. So we can go on. Mike, I'm sorry to have interrupted All right. you. So at the top of page four under or, we will list the improvements, which are the loop road, the drainage um, facilities, uh, and signage. Right. Because what you missed there was that he, they do not, Mark's opinion is that there is not a need for a public improvement security agreement here. Under specific so conditions, I'll, I'll reference Mark's uh, memo of July 8th in condition 1, 2, 3 remain the same, as does 4. I'll add the date uh, and attach the variance in condition. His August 8th memo, you mean? Yeah, 8-8. 8-8. What did I say? I'm at 8-8. He has 8-8 written down. Yeah, I have 8-8. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Uh, I'll add the date of the variance decision and attach it in condition five. Mm -hmm. um, six is, is uh, stays. Seven will change to outside buffer ridge. So will eight. Um, nine is something we discussed. That's not a problem. The narrative, I'll need the date and a copy of that. 11 is the standard condition on drainage. Um, conditions 12, 13, and 14 go away, and we use just condition 15 because there's no public improvement security agreement. I don't believe there's any offer of dedication, right? There are no offers of dedication. So 16 goes away, and 17 is your standard condition. Okay. Mike, was comment number, I'm sorry, I'm catching up to you. Was comment number three, it says Department of Public Works. I don't know that that's applicable, is it? Does that apply here? Is the Orange County Department of Public Works? I don't, I don't really believe had it does. In my notes. No, not for the roadway. They had uh, approval of the sewer. Right, so uh, that's in comment four. Yeah, so okay, I'll take it out, sorry. Then with regard to variances on this particular, we got a height variance for building one. Is that what you're referring to? I may have just carried that from the last one. There's no variance for Glenwood 2 then? No. Mm. Okay. okay. Nope. I probably carried it over from the original decision. I don't decision. recall. We have to look at no, that. No, there definitely isn't. We did not make an application to the I don't recall any. There yeah, because you didn't have any parking issues. Because We're was not having the auditorium in right. the basement. Right, which you took that out. Building, you took which it out. Right. Okay. Yep, I'll take it out. Okay. So 5 is coming out? Mm -hmm. Yes. One number six, Mike, the uh, wetlands issuance of a permit for disturbance. We're not proposing any disturbance. It's just we're waiting on a jurisdiction. Just a delineation? We're just waiting on the, ju the jurisdictional determination, which okay. I believe you uh, correctly in your last sentence said that the board agreed no certificate of occupancy shall be issued until we get that from you, from the okay. court. I'll change it to jurisdictional determination. Four is staying, right? Yes. Right. Five, we were saying, comes out because there wasn't. Yeah, that was for the first school. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, on number nine, with that conceptual future Larkin Drive connection, yeah. we do propose grading in that area. So we're limited to erection of structures. I'm sorry, say that again? There's the issue of the potential future county roadway. Right. And we wanted to make sure there were no incursions into that area that would make construction of that roadway impossible. We certainly don't want to erect structures. Kirk right. is pointing out the grading is shown in that area. I take it that grading wouldn't interfere with the ability to construct the roadway. No, and this is something actually the board took a pretty close look at, and we even changed right. the plan a little bit after the site visit and talking about grading. Which is by the nature of I don't think of the language thing. changes because we're simply saying there can't be a... a well, there is grading. Oh, so because we, no, there no is... No encroachment by erection of structures is permitted in that area. Okay. I'll just take out the grading part. Number, uh, number 10, if my narrative is dated May 2017. May, May what? Just May. 2017? Yeah, I guess. Noreen, can you double check that? Not now, yes. but you just so Mike. We, yeah, we I'll need a PDF right copy of it if you could. Of the narrative? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I have it right here. Noreen probably gets it. Okay. What did we say about six? Is there anything in six? Uh, jurisdictional determination only is what we're waiting on. There's no need for a permit. There's no disturbance proposed.
officer certificate, no offers, right? Correct, that goes away. Sorry, I'm just catching up. I don't think there's an, uh, I'm sorry, Audrey, did you just say this? There's no offers of dedication? No, no, I said no, I was just catching up. I was making a note, no offers. Okay, anything else? All right, so what's the plan here, Mike? You, you're going to circulate a revised resolution? Mm -hmm. You think that's necessary, or you can act on this one. It's all rudimentary, though. It's mostly removal. Of yeah, it's just items. removing There's stuff. I think I'm okay with it. Plugging in of a date or two. Yeah, I don't think it's that complicated. Yeah, it's really not. Um, let me just double check the narrative date. I mean, subject to the narrative date being correct. May 2017. Whatever the last one was, I don't know. I can't. You know. We we only prepared and submitted one. Oh, well, that makes it easy, right? <coughs> June I had the concern that the plans don't match the narrative I think actually Mark brought that up as well yeah that had to do with water right um, but that's been revised on the plans but the on narrative the is still fine yeah uh, correct yeah. yeah so then by that time the water had shaken out far enough uh, with Tom Cusack's analysis and well testing and the two years worth of data that we realized we could use the treatment facilities in the existing school because they're twice the size they needed to be to backfeed this building. Okay. But my plan, and then, so that was all explained in the narrative, my plan still showed a direct connection of building two to the existing well. But the plans that Mark has. So the current plans are consistent with the narrative? Yes, that's correct. I don't have the, the narrative. You, it says it was dropped off. I don't have it in my email. So I can't even <coughs> confirm that. All right. Well, okay, that's something that we want to make sure of. But I'm okay with um, proceeding as revised if the rest of the board is. Yeah, okay, I'm getting lots of. Yep, okay, all right. So a motion to. Um, um, proceed with the resolution of approval of the site plan for Glenwood Partners as revised tonight. Who wants to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Who wants to second it? I'll second it. Okay, Lisa? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Feels so Thank productive. You. It's like an, the end of a chapter. I'm gonna miss you guys. <laughs> you'll no, be you're not. Oh, I'm sure you'll be back to build another yeah, school. Down, you'll be back. Isaac's gonna very go home and do his happy dance with his kids. Right? Thank you very much. Next month is gonna be a planning board meeting? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> yes, there will be. It just won't fill be potentially without you. We'll miss you. Uh, Isaac, okay. do you need this resolution, right? No, you can have it yeah, if you would like comments it. For John. Second last night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So the next on our agenda is the administrative section, which is the minutes. Um, and we have everyone, I guess, should have brought them. Where did they put them? Some of them, yeah, I don't know. It was in our packet. All right. So I'm going to need a second to look at the May 9 um, let me see. So we might want to just take a quick break. I think it might go quicker. I don't know that we need Mark for this. Although, you know what though? Oh, I hate to do that though. I was going to say we should skip quickly to the other stuff that Mark would weigh in on, but then we'd never get to the minutes. 
You know, I'm, I'm afraid that we'll spend too much time and we won't get to the minutes again. We have to consult the I know, but you have promised me we're going to do the minutes. Okay, everyone's going to stick it out. We're going to do the minutes. We started a half hour early, so. Okay, all right. So let's then discuss the application procedures, the forms. You guys were all supposed to look at those. They're in the PDF, too. Oh, yeah, okay. I put it on that. Yeah. Some of us have to look. So what you can get now or guys how you want to do this um, did anyone actually go through it and mark it up or, or have suggested comments or changes I'm sorry Audra, I didn't have an opportunity okay and has anyone got anything good Which one did you want to try? Um, well the packet itself is the one that was the big staple thing um, and that is actually what the applicant would see if they clicked on it on the website it's this big thing and then separately You'll see it's it's the application appearance procedures, right? And then it's got um, and then actually, it's actually different on the website because the project opening form is part of it. It's just redundant. But either way, so yeah, so this thing is what's there. Um, so let's maybe do that first. Uh oh, why are you back? Okay. Go ahead. Come well, on, back up. Let, let them sit down. The yep. Line is minor. It's, it's semantics. Oh, is this Glenwood still? Yes. Okay, so we're back on for Glenwood. Uh, so outside, I was saying, okay, what can I start with? Audra signed the plan. So I noticed here in the sewer, number four, the sewer connection, it says approval is subject to review and approval by the connection in the sewer district. The plan shall not be signed until such written approval is delivered. We are uh, just pursuing a lateral connection for this plan because the main is there already. And my experience with the sewer department is they're not going to entertain the lateral connection application unless we have an approved plan. So it's sort of the cart before the horse kind of thing? You want to tie it to building permit? Mark, what do you think? No, I understand what they're saying. It's, it's They're not looking for a sewer main extension. They're just looking for a lateral connection. Right. And being that they border the the the, uh, town, the county sewer line, they're entitled to connect in. Uh, it's literally in front of the building. Yeah, right it's in there. The, building. Um, the other issues as far as uh, for Mickle would be different because those we have easements and all. This is right on their property, direct connection. So do we need the condition at all, or do we tie it to building permit? Does the county allow a lateral to their main? Yeah, I think yeah. the answer is is it should be um, should be before building permit. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Ben should have that permit in hand before he issues the building permit. Right. But not before you stamp the plans. So I will Let's change that last sentence to no building permit will be issued until such written approval is delivered. Well, you can ask. Um, we can't make it um, before the CFO? I don't know that the town wants to issue a building permit unless they know that you have your sewer connection authorization. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Speaking with Ben, 
under the state code, he can only issue a permit knowing that there are facilities available. Right. And that's the permit. So the first sentence is going to stay. Yeah. The second sentence will read, no building permit will be issued until such written approval is delivered. I think that's fair. And then Isaac asked the same question about the uh, water supply with the Department of Health. Which it, number? It says number two. It's subject to and conditioned upon delivery of written approval by the Department of Health. I would think the same on that. And no building permit will be issued. You've already got the system. It's just a matter of getting the authorization to connect. feed the second building from the first building. It's just a question of connecting. And there's correspondence in the record for this building. Well, we weren't there. holding up the signing of the plans for that anyway, but I think it's good to say that the building yep. permit won't be oh, issued until same, you've got the approval. The same sentences we put in four to that. Yeah. When I read that outside, I wasn't sure of the intent of that, so that's why I said that. Isaac, I don't know. Would you like me to just bring the plans up to uh, Chairperson Schwartz's desk now with a pen? <laughs> I need 12 copies. <laughs> To, uh, probably I'd like to rescind then yeah. I'll make a motion to rescind the approval of the first resolution is that the way it should be worded sure that'll work and and, and maybe at the same time make the motion to we usually do to approve okay, it with fine. the amendments we just discussed yep just do it in one okay and, and to approve the resolution the, re the resolution as revised on do we want to say these specific items two and four whatever it was i think it's on the video and we know what it is yeah okay so as, as revised yeah so i'll make that motion i'll second it aye 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 okay thank you very thank much you. okay all right back to the <coughs> creative Back to administrative review of the application and procedures procedures packet. Did anyone get a chance to look at it? And does anyone have any comments? Your front cover sheet should probably indicate that the deadline for submittal is per your adopted schedule, so that you don't have this saying 14 days oh, okay. and having a schedule that potentially could have a different day because of holidays or something else. Yeah. It should just be as per the board's published schedule. So here, I know some people have some confusion because the application itself, if you look at it, is an application for subdivision plat approval, um, but not one for site plan. So right off the bat, I get questions from people going, well, where's the one? Where's the application for site plan? So um, I, I think that we have to come up with something that addresses yeah. both. Or maybe a separate one for each, but but frankly, that you could have both in an application. Most, most boards have a place where you check right. on the top, either subdivision, site plan, or, or lot line change. Well, this could be both. You could could. check both, right? If you, if it applies. Yeah, I think it has to be. The checklists like many times are different for yeah. content, which is what's in the law as well. But, frankly, but the application should work for either individually or a combination. Given the fact that, and I think I've told you this before, we have yet to find this document in Word version in the system. Yeah. So we need a whole new one anyway. Um, and so I, I, I frankly think that given the state that it's in, um, we probably should look for some other versions from other towns to see what's working. And I would look to maybe Mark and Mike to let me know what they like and what they've seen out there that's I good. I can probably get you a couple Word versions to add. Yeah. 
and, and then maybe we go from there because yeah. there's a lot about this that, that bothers me. Um, but that was just one of them that it really it just misleads people and they go, well, well, I don't want subdivision, I want site plan. So, but and then the site and then there's a document in here which so it's what do they call this thing? Payment of application fee. It doesn't really have a name, but on the cover sheet that's what they call it. No, no, it's not. I don't know what this is, but it's the document that says I blank acknowledge my responsibility to reimburse the town. We should give that a name and include it as a required document in the cover right. sheet. Right. And beyond that, though, the other thing is is this. Given that we now understand that the code requires um, us to send the bills to the applicant for, for, and they have 15 days to object to those invoices or we can then pay them. Um, we don't always know to whom we're supposed to be sending them. And so I think as part of the application, um, there not only should be the sign off that they're acknowledging that they that this the code exists and they have to they're responsible for the bills, but also that they're identifying to whom they are sent and that they and the method by which they are sent. That it will be by email unless they otherwise say so in this application. Could be right on that so same it's clear. form. Yeah. And then and then in the same respect, we've had the issue of having the applicant have um, a representative show up, but then not clearly tell us what their relationship is to the applicant. You know, someone just shows up and says, well, I'm here for the applicant, but they're not the project manager, they're not the architect, they're not the engineer, and they're not the owner, and you just don't even know how they're related, and then they never come back again, someone else shows up. Well, I think you should have, for anyone who represents an, an applicant before the board, there should be a completed proxy form authorizing them to represent and the application. And that's where I was going. Yeah, I don't so know if it's a formal proxy form or it's just identifying the people that will speak on their behalf. No, it's an actual work? proxy form, which uh, I'll, when I obtain that other package, I'll send you that as well. And okay. We've had cases where there's been three proxy forms filled out on one application because there'd be more than one person which representing. Which is fine. But and, then we and know the owner's endorsement is a similarly, similarly formal document that makes, because often it's a contract vendee or someone other than the property owner who's making yeah. the application. But we so. want to know that we're, we're talking to an authorized individual. Yeah. yeah. And and that, I don't see that really in here. So, um, you know, and we've had that issue before. All right. And then what was the other thought? If, uh, if truly you're going to scrap, as it may be, this version of the application package because you need to get it all set up in Word, um, maybe... Mike and I can take a stab at taking another Word version, trying to conform it to the general format that of the components that you need to continue with, mm -hmm. add the items that might be missing, and generate a new application package that uh, you can mark up. Rather than mark this one up, yeah. if we're going to have to rework it. I don't want to mark this one up. We can maybe, maybe after we create the new one, we go through this and see if there's yeah. anything that is missing from the one we did. But right. this is too hard to work from. Yeah, I think no, I don't want to work from this one. I mostly want people to look at this to say what they think is not working so we can then fu do something new that addresses all of those things. Why don't, why don't you let us take a stab at it yeah. and taking another version, add to it those forms which may be unique to Monroe mm -hmm. and create a new package that then you can mark up. Right. And yeah. It'll be words. So it'll be all easier to change. Now, in terms of what we have, we have subdivisions, site plans, special permits, special permits, lot, lot line, line change. changes, wetland applications, wetlands, wetland. and accessory apartments. So we right. actually have you know four or five categories. Of and the project for opening form, which is also in your packets, would need to be revised for. Um, the accessory apartment, but I think you made your own. Yeah, I did. I think these are, Mark and I were saying, these are internal forms, really, although the way I What's created the accessory, forms? the project opening form and, and... No, the project opening form is not an internal form. The applicant fills it out. Absolutely. Oh, okay. I thought that was something no. that you filled out the process. No, absolutely They have not. to bring it to me. It's... What's that? They bring it to me completely. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they are required to submit it because that basically is them figuring out what they're telling us what they're submitting and what and then figuring out what the fee is and then we double check it. Well, that was the way I prepared the accessory apartment yeah. permit application. So maybe they're just pages of the, of the packet, but if they become significantly different then maybe we should have 
two or Separate. three applications. Okay. I think we'll try to see how it looks when we've done it. If we yep. can make it a series of pages, that this will be the accessory apartment section. Yeah. You know, because conceivably somebody could apply for everything at once. But yeah. And it just seems to me there's a lot of, I mean, this thing is really typical subdivision map notes, and there's a lot of stuff in here that I, I suspect is really outdated. I mean, there's a reason why it's this thick, yeah. and it's not just because they have the short-form EIF and the long-form EIF, and they actually have well testing protocols and then proposed septic system requirements and drainage requirements. and. Yeah, I don't know how up-to-date I don't know that are. we want to include those or reference the code. Well, that's what I, where I'm going with this. I, the, no one's looked at these for years. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how accurate they are, and nor whether that's something we really want to do. And part of the recommendation that you made to the town board on the zoning chapter change is that the required elements of the application and of the post-approval package are subject to policy of the planning board that you can change from time to time. So it may right. be that w we're not going to have these antiquated you know, linen copies and all kinds of things right. that, that are not useful to us any longer but are stuck in the code and it's hard for us to do away with. Yeah. But we don't know where the town board is going to go with that issue, but we can, we'll take a crack at it. I don't know if you, if you find it helpful, if you were preparing an application to see that level of detail of requirement in the application, I think no. you'd normally go through the chapter. No, and, no and, and you know, such as the, some of the standard notes that we've created over the last five years. I suspect are not reflected in these. No, and right. I just provide those to the applicant as needed. In either in comments or by email. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there's some merit to kind of memorializing what that current those current standards are, and having them. But at the same time, you don't want it to be overwhelming. You want it to be fluid, and you don't want it to be overwhelming. So, and they may change. We tweak them as we go. So, I'm not really sure how to handle that. I kind of like the idea of memorializing what the current are, what they currently are. But there's I mean, downsides to I mean, it. Any policies that you formally adopt may need to be attached. But right. if they're merely standard notes and standard requirements that are, as you say, fluid, there's no need to include those. What would be an example of a policy that we would adopt that we would want that maybe the wetland policy? The wetland, wetland policy, policy is really the only formal policy right. that we've right. we've considered. Or in subdivision, we say that whatever size structure you show on your plan is the limit of what you can construct because your drainage study has to match it. Although I, although we've asked that that be part of the new code. Yeah, but right now it's not in but the it's code, not. it's just so that a policy. that would be right. a very worthwhile item because that right. impacts uh, yes. the yes. stormwater pollution prevention plan. So I, I mean, I th so I kind of feel like certain of those policies should be memorialized and then we would have the obligation of updating them as we tweak them. But I think you could add those to the package and you may end up with a half a dozen. Okay. At most. So maybe th give that some thought. And then think about the, remember we had this horrible, what I think is a horrible issue, uh, they, the town board is, or maybe Bonnie, someone's proposed that um, Ben not be the gatekeeper, the code enforcement official not be the gatekeeper for, for applications. So essentially, um, we would be making the determination of whether or not site plan approval is needed instead of Ben. Whether a use is allowed. Whether use is allowed. Yeah, all those things. I'm really hoping that the town board, um, you know, takes our advice and, and does not change it and leaves it with Ben. Yeah. If that's the case, um, I had submitted to Ben a form, an example of a form from the village of Monroe that um, sort of helps him for the applicant to fill out. I think I mentioned this last time. Mm -hmm. And so I'll send that to you. I think that you should not spend time on it though yet. Well, I, s well, I was going to say you shouldn't spend time on it yet because, hey, they may adopt that and we may be the gatekeeper. <coughs> But until they do that, we, we're Well, let's still assume we prevail on Ben to do it even if they don't. Oh, that's possible too. Now, I submit that to Ben. I haven't heard from him, but I have not met with him lately, and that's my own fault. So well, most building inspectors don't volunteer for things like that. But Ben's no, no, a pretty he's good guy. Been, no, he's been <laughs> eager. He and I have been talking about this for months, and, yeah. and he's the one who's very much, he's already doing it. And he yes. would love to have a form that streamlines it for the applicant to give him all the information so he could just say yep or no. And then they would take that with them to the ZBA or to the planning board. With him being effectively here full time, he very much wants to be aware of what yeah. applications are being processed. It makes sense. So it gives him that information, Absolutely. whereas he wouldn't get it if right. he's remo removed from the process. It certainly makes sense, and to not give it to a planning board where the chair is part time. That's silly. 
I, I just but so I'm I'm lobbying. I will lobby this. I haven't. Plus, had, if you were to to tell an applicant no, that use isn't allowed, they have nowhere they can go because okay. they can't appeal from you. They can only appeal from Ben. Yeah, it doesn't make so sense. So it, it 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 doesn't work. Did we say that in your comment letter? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I will send that to you as well. Um, and would, uh, okay, so that was mine. Those were my comments. Did anyone else have anything on this? Do you feel comfortable with the uh, percentages on escrow? No. Like that? You know, no, not at all. I'm kind of thinking this that where it's a small, like we have the applications, the fee, the initial amount is the 2500 And then, you know, you add on from there um, for $50 per thousand square foot or whatever it is. Where it's under, say, $5,000, the 80% threshold is really a pain in the patootie. Um, and so I'm, th I'm thinking, I don't know if it's $5,000 or if it's something greater, but where, where the total amount is coming out to be, say, up to, let's just use that as an example, up to $5,000, maybe the threshold should be, you know, 60%. Well, can't you do a, like a, a minimum scale or value something? Or uh, if and, it doesn't exceed a minimum thirty percent. Well, a minimum. Well, yeah. Or whichever value is less. What do you hope to achieve? That you don't have to ask for the escrow to be re replenished every month, or yeah. just you want it to last longer? Because you would know. You can take a look at what what are the for a category of application, what is usually the combined total of bills between Mark and myself? Generally, I mean, in, I, it's rare that in any one given month I have bills from all consultants and vendors of over $1,000. It's almost always under $1,000. What's the current replenishment threshold? 80%. 80%. So if they go from 100% to 80%, then you have to ask them again? Yes. Uh -huh. Most boards are down in the 25 <coughs> Yeah. Percent range. It's really so. Just for so explain for the edification of anyone watching. So yeah, if it's a twenty five hundred dollar escrow, the second I use five, there's five hundred dollars of bills. I can ask for more money. That's and it's it's and of course I I have some leeway in the code to use my own judgment and weigh that. But it's, why don't it's you have something like for a major subdivision, a minimum five thousand dollar balance or forty percent or twenty five percent, whichever is well uh, greater. The classification is what's a major subdivision. So, well, five, five lots. Five lots. Five lots are we define it in the in the regulations. Okay. Five <laughs> so anything over five lots. Five lots or more. And know. then logically, yeah. so what would that? No, we we can't tell from that. Would you be able to plug in the number that Anthony has suggested, or the percentage that you think, based upon what typically happens, is? The most usable? Well, that's the project. So the project opening form does that for you. So if we took that as an example, so let's just say a commercial subdivision. I don't know that one as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My suggestion is, is that you do 25% of the initial amount is the trigger or a greater amount if deemed appropriate by the chair. My well, reason for it is, is there my reason for it is is that if you know that you've got a traffic consultant looking at something, you've got the water consultant looking at something, and you know've got a lot of potential billing coming up, you then have the right to say twenty five percent of the you know close to the twenty five is not going to be enough, and you can just ask for another amount. It leaves you the flexibility to adapt to the activity on the project so when you're saying when it reaches twenty five percent of the initial amount it's automatic okay. that they have to replenish. However, if they're at 40% or 30% and you've got a, four consultants working on a major project and you know you're going to have a heavy amount of billing because oh, yeah, there's an EIS more. being reviewed and you know, you've got three or four consultants looking at it, you could say, we need X amount of dollars because there's a lot of activity on this project at, for the next month or, and or a half. Or maybe not X amount of dollars, but 70%. Now, yeah. recognize or replenish it now. Don't wait. Mm -hmm. The potential problem with waiting until it goes to 25% and it's been a historic problem in the it town is, is yes. say an applicant doesn't, he decides he's going to walk away from a project mm -hmm. and, and you had, and well. your escrow had reduced itself to 27% at the time he did. And then you get bills from your consultants. You don't have enough money to pay them. And that's yeah. caused problems at the town board level in terms of budget and of course it's cause problems for us and not having enough money there. I think that's where the 80% came from. If that's unworkable, 
That's why I was asking. I don't have a, an idea of what it is that you get in, in, in bills on an average monthly basis and what would be the appropriate percentage. Okay. You've got to be careful if it's too low that you don't put the town in a position where right. it doesn't Absolutely. have the funds yeah. necessary to pay the consultants who've done the work for we you. We certainly have times when, you know, it's getting low. We say, you know, submit this amount and they either don't respond or they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, did you get the check tonight? He said he'll bring it to me oh. in the morning. You keep saying that. I know, but so I didn't want to say that. We won't, <laughs> yeah. So, but we've been hearing that for three months. Two, yeah. But that no, might he's be, been giving me it other might ones. be okay though anyway. But yes, that happens. <clears throat> Um, the prior problem was that no one was looking at it yes. whatsoever, so it went into negative numbers. Different problem. It was yeah. a different problem. If someone's actually monitoring it, I think that we can come up with some sort of. And if the twenty-five percent is enough to cover what you'd normally have in a given month, and you're on top of it, it's not going to be a problem. Well, under the current and at the end of the application packet is the actual resolution with the fees. I think the. The lowest amount that you're gonna we're gonna have is well, so it's twenty five hundred dollars per lot for a residential subdivision. That's the lowest amount. Then we've got three fifty. I'm trying to think of what's the what's the lowest amount we would ever have on one of these projects in the initial, and I can't imagine it's gonna be much less than twenty five hundred dollars. Even on a, like a commercial non-residential where, for instance, we have um, Kingdom Hall where they're not actually proposing anything, any real change, so we just ha had them give us like the $2,500 flat. Yeah. You know, that's probably the lowest we ever will have because even with like a multifamily residential site plan, it's 500 per unit. Okay, so there you might have um, maybe you only have four units or something. I suppose you can have two, only $2,000. And then your 25% is a pretty low number. That could be a problem, the 25% on something small like that. Mm. Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, the one, one thing you should look at also is uh, on page five of the fees, you're getting 2500 per lot for residential mm -hmm. and only 350 for commercial. Um, yeah, how come? Good question. What would be the logic for that? I, I would understand that it could could likely be less, but that's very dramatic. Yeah. Looks like one was raised and the other one was missed. Oh, it could be a mistake. Remember, I caught the other mistake, which had me asking certain applicants for seventy million dollars. So, you know. <laughs> wow. Um, well, they said they'd bring the check tomorrow. Let's just add to your list of check. yes, it was. So let's just add to your list of things to do to please look at the resolution with the fees and really look at them for today's, you know, we will. market. Yeah. And, and maybe suggest to us changes. All right, based on what you're seeing and what seems to work. All right. Okay. So that's that. I actually thought the accessory apartment permit application they prepared was great. It, it, it's it's crazy in a way because it's the amount of detail they require. It's so it's much already, detail, yeah. but it is actually the checklist that they would have to go through to submit a full package to us, a full application to us. And I wonder, had it would have been lovely for the town board to look at this before they <laughs> did the lot to see the the hurdles these people are going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. um, and I see you have in here the twenty two hundred fifty for the. Um, for the fee and then the 750 for the escrow. So, and that was in your letter, so we'll see yep. what the town board says about that. But I didn't have changes to that. Yeah. Um, did anyone have changes to the project opening form? Is that going to always be tweaked as well? Oh, that's you, right? Here you go. Yeah, so that would change based on what you find, what we decide on the fee structure. Okay, now. There seems to be a typo on that. I mean, I oh, know it's there minor, where? but you know, if you have residential subdivision zero to fifty, and then residential subdivision over fifty-one, then fifty-one gets it's free. Oh. Yeah. Yep. It's free. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Fifty-one's free. Make a note. Yeah. Yep. Not intended. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, just technically speaking, procedural, how we do this. So we all decide after your recommendations what we want to do. We come up with forms. Um, do the forms have to be approved by the town? No. Now, if there's a content change, though, like different fees, 
The fees, the town and approves by, yes. The town would have to approve yes. that. But yes. forms-wise, I don't think so. And, and if you were going to change code provisions regarding what must be submitted, the town board would have to do that. Now, I suppose if you didn't insist that the applicant, there's waiver authority in the subdivision regulations, and I believe in the, in the zoning chapter that says you can waive the required elements of submission in appropriate circumstances, which is a good clause to have. So if you want to ignore the requirement that linen prints be submitted as part of the post-approval project, I think you'd be wise to do it. I don't even think people know how to produce I don't it. Even know what that is. I think if you offer someone providing PDFs instead of linen plans, they're going to jump right on it. I've never seen the linen plans, have I? No. The old plans. No. Mylars. They they're older than the Mylars. Mylars. They're, they're older than Mylars. Mylars. Isn't, isn't linen different than the Mylar? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, CPR. but Mylar is like the plastic stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. That we get. Yeah. And yeah. then I understand why you would need that still. Yeah. You know, on if the you're site. filing a subdivision, the county still is looking for Mylars. Right. But a site plan, I don't know what the town would do with a linen plat of the site plan. Okay. Um, and then, Mark, you and I have spent some time talking about the submission process <laughs> and how many, the number of the plans that we want PDFs submitted um, every time. Um, there are some other things, too, and they're kind of escaping me now. But that, that and one of the items that the, the town board is going to have to deal with separately, which is, is, I think, hampering us on every application, is for them to formalize the procedure by which they want to have uh, performance bonds established for both subdivisions and site plans and how they want to establish the, app the, the applicability of fee percentages. I believe the code right now is very clear when it comes to roadway public improvements, but it is not so helpful in my mind when it speaks to site plans. Wasn't that in your comment letter, though? Yes. So yeah. they, and, and we submitted that to the town board. So yes. hopefully that will get some And some Brian action. is well aware of it because yeah. we had a meeting. Right, we had that, and there was emails back So once that's it. resolved, then we would be able to even create some more wonderful forms for project closeout, which would help collect the correct fees for different types of applications. And one thing that I hope that the, the town board will clarify, it's very problematic, this public versus private definition. I sure. truly would hope that the term public as it applies to privately owned elements uh, could discontinue. It's very confusing. I, yeah. I, I know no one who calls uh, roadways and storm drainage and water lines and sewer lines on a private project that will never be dedicated to town calls them public improvements. <laughs> it's just... I think the reason was that the only authority the town has for bonding is for public improvements. So if you want to bond things that are not dedicated improvements, really can't what, require private what, improvements to be bonded. So what, what we've done in a lot of municipalities is that when the site plan is approved, they're required to submit a, a improvement cost estimate. That cost estimate gets accepted by the planning board. The inspection fee that covers all the departments and engineering to do inspections of the private improvements for consistency with the site plan yeah. approval that fee is collected based on the improvement estimate. If someone cares to ask for a CO before landscaping is finished or a retaining wall is finished for that area of the site plan, they are asked to post a guarantee prior to the issuance of the CO to guarantee okay. that they will get back there and get it done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why fair. certainly it's doable that way. Why developers love that is is it's a private project. Why tie their money up? Right. On something that them. will never be dedicated to the town. Right. So we've been doing that for 30 years with some municipalities, and developers love it and never complain. However, if they ask for a CO and something isn't finished that's a site plan element, we have the right to say, no, you've got to bond it. You'll get the bond released in the spring when the weather gets so is better. This a po just a policy in the other towns, or is this actually part of their code? I think it's more policy in it's, most cases. Uh, the, the reference to the inspection fee is in the code, but the procedure is a adopted procedure of the building department and the planning board. The now, advantage is this, is this fairness. something that we're ap asking them to adopt in the code, or have we just asked them to clarify that this can be our policy? 
I don't know that those things are helpful in codes because when you want to fine tune them, I, I really think it's better to have your performance security article say that the town board hereby, you know, authorize or, or, or announces that they have the authority to, uh, by resolution, establish policies for financial uh, security. That way they can change it by resolution. It's too okay. cumbersome to have to change things along the way. The advantage of Mark's proposal, back to it for a moment, is what developers hate is when they have to bond the thing that they have to build. So now they have to build it and pay for it once. And then before they can build it, they got to bond it, which is to set aside the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. So in Mark's example, they don't have to bond those private improvements, the public ones we, we're going to still require. But if they haven't built it, and it's a site plan element, before they get a CO, they're going to have to put up the money to make sure it gets done. But that's they made that bed, not not the code. But that would be a policy, though, that we can add to the application. I, I, I'm in favor. As long that's as the where, that's that's where the, the town board would really have to sign off on, sure. though. It's like what we did with the fee schedule at the town board level. We made yeah. it that fees would be set by resolution of the town board from time to time. Because once you put okay. them in the code, that, then you got to do a local law to change it. And that means a public hearing and filing with the Secretary of State and all kinds of formalities yeah, that aren't helpful. But the, okay. the actual fees would be referenced in the, as far as authorization would be in the, the code. authority for it, yeah. So right. we've we've spoken to to Brian. Mike and I had a meeting with him on, on these ideas, but I just want to share them with you because I think there's still room for some improvement. Okay. All right. I don't know if we discussed it in this forum, um, but wondering if we discussed um, restoration bonds. So if a project was partially started and it was left in an unsafe condition. That's it's in the code. It's in the code. Okay. Um, and then the only other issue on the application was the entity's um, disclosure form. Disclosure. And did Brian get back to you? On which aspect? I think he did. On the aspect of when you have that publicly traded large scale company, having the. Uh, he went along with the recommendations I made to Walmart, but I think he recognizes that by the letter, that really doesn't satisfy it. It doesn't. But Not at all. I, you know, so I think that's something they should attempt to fix, but he's. Not uncomfortable, I guess he's even comfortable with the recommendation that when it's a publicly traded corporation, it's enough that uh, we get a list of, to make sure, you know, we, we don't have any of those people living in Monroe, the board of directors. And that's easy because it's in their annual report every year. Right. Okay. So, and I'm sorry, did we add, did we add that issue to your letter? I can't remember. I'd have to, I'd have to look at the letter. I don't know. Can you please just make a note of that? Yeah. yeah. I just want to, I mean, because really, the solution doesn't actually solve the letter of the law. So. No. And they should be aware of the issue, the town board meeting. And I'm not so sure Brian has made them aware. So. Okay. Anything else on this, guys? No. All right. All right. So moving on to. The wetland marker policy. Let's do that while Mark is still here. And so I think we have in here the photos um, that Mary provided of the decals, right? And then. Where'd that photo come from, Mary? Over by Mombasia Park. Looks, looks like that wetland boundary. It looks like it's in the middle of a pond, let alone a wetland. The, the beavers have made it bigger Mark over there. It needs uh, to be reevaluated. Yeah, I can just print it again. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, so what happens? That just raises a good point. So, where the beaver changes the circumstances of the location, what happens? I mean, do you move the, I mean, do you have them come back in to move the markers? I mean, what do you do? I, I don't. I don't know that you get another bite at the apple once you've once you've processed an application. Yeah. If they come back in for another application, then you can have them move it. But okay. I don't think there's a lifetime obligation to move the markers <coughs> to follow yeah. the beavers. This is kind of ironic. But it, <laughs> one year doesn't make a wetlands anyway. Even if they yeah. didn't, it takes like probably ten or more years before you finally hit hydric soils and the vegetation. And, and that's one of the advantages of putting the markers at the outer edge of the buffer. It gives you that much more time before yeah. the actual wetland reaches the buffer. They're going swimming if they're going to fix this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So on this issue, do I have something more than this document? Well, I'm going I'm to update. Yes. I'm going to update the text so that the wording matches 
what was discussed tonight and the, the sticker that, that Mary has provided that I have now have a copy of. I'll co coordinate with Mary to make sure we're on the same page. And then I think we'll have a text uh, policy that you can adopt. Okay. Um, my, I envision that the town is not going to have to lay the money out to buy these markers. I think it should be no. the same as when a developer dedicates a road and or has an easement that they're going to put monuments in. They put the monuments in. They put it in per town standard. Their surveyor has to buy the monuments and put them in. Wouldn't that be part of the policy? Yeah. Okay, right. you're going to add that. But right now, there is a budget line for wetland markers. Yeah. So the planning board has it, it in its budget. Maybe it's a reimbursement issue. We can handle it. It's, I suppose they can either pay for it directly or they can reimburse us for the cost yes. and yeah. buy them from us. No. Yeah, it just it, it looks as if the sticker itself has a effectively a model number that's keyed into the town of Monroe. If you look on the bottom. Oh, yeah. So really all you'll have to do once we create the standard sticker, tell them you've got to use sticker number or whatever, and they're going to have to buy them. The only advantage to an applicant is if the town wants to lay the money out for 200 of them or whatever, they'll get a cheaper cost. But I don't know that you might have better things to spend the money on. Mm -hmm. Let applicants put them in as needed. The one other thing is right now um, the applicant has to go in, into the highway department and they keep a log. So, right, so they know where they are. Right. Like possibly that. in this policy, maybe they still have to go to the highway department to say, we're putting these markers out there or at the planning board. It, you know, that could be discussed. Yeah, I think though. the reason they go to the highway department is they borrow the tools from there. Yeah. And then, again, you've got the liability that if the tool doesn't work quite right and the person slices his arm open, well, there's a claim. So yeah. I think you're better off having you know, the same as surveyors buy the tools to put the monuments in, let surveyors buy the tool to put the markers in, and uh, the town will just administer what exactly you have to put in and maybe keep a log. Is there any um, requirement to treat these like survey stakes so that somebody doesn't m maliciously move them? And GPS, no sorry, GPS coordinates recorded somewhere? No, and, and I don't, that would have to be a local law with a penalty for disturbance. I don't know that we ha have anything in the code that makes it a criminal offense to, to touch one of these. That's really the only way you do it. Yeah, you'd have to do that. I like that. <laughs> but that's a town board action. Do towns action. do this? I don't know anybody that does wetland no. markers, so here ahead of the game is the only one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anybody who may who has. There might be something do in the state law that survey? makes it criminal to move a no. survey marker. Right. Yeah, but I, I don't know anybody who has wetland markers, so I wouldn't. Have a reference. No one has. Well, it'd be pretty easy to move it or not place it where it belongs. Well, that's where we wanted to have the surveyors state the, the limits. Realistically, the likelihood of figuring out who did it is yeah. pretty slim. Yeah, probably. Blame the beaver. Well, um, you could say the same thing for survey yeah. uh, stakes and oh, you, yeah. Know, yeah. you know. At least you have some recourse, or at least some appearance like of it, recourse. Honestly. Why is the environment less important than the property boundary? So I can, we, we did have a section on enforcement. I can send, if that's your pleasure, a follow-up suggesting that uh, um, enforcement sanctions for moving wetland markers should be added to the code. Moving and or disturbing? Disturbing. Yeah. Okay. Well, disturbing. Well, just when they lay out the markers in the field, are they according to a? Uh, approved plan. Yeah, are, but they, I, are the markers are the markers where they have to put them in? I envision that when you approve the plan and the plan locates the boundary and the note outlines the the requirement to place the bound the uh, the, the mark. markers at the boundary of the uh, buffer, that a surveyor, the project surveyor, would stake that out initially for the construction fence, and then that mark out would would hold to put in the permanent markers. And is there a prescription in terms of the distance between markers? It's in the... Or angle yeah, points? It's, 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 it's here in the, the suggested. Mm -hmm. It's in your packet. I think I do need to add the requirement that the project surveyor, licensed surveyor, stake out those limits. But we'll we'll work on that before the next meeting. And would we say that, that they would be buying them from the town or buying them individually per town spec? I think you're going to adopt the policy that says they have to buy them, they have to have the tools, they have to put them in. I mean, the only thing I think is if you buy them from the town, we control that the specs are met from the actual marker. 
Well, aren't there or you may want to buy just the stickers. Let them buy the markers. That way you know the stickers are all uniform. Yeah, you want the sticker to a be white. A brown carbonite marker is a brown carbonite marker. Right. So maybe you want to get the stickers and buy a box of stickers so that you know they're all uniform. Yeah. Um, who, who actually orders the decal and, and, and the markers? Um, Sherney? The town okay. guy? The, la the last time I looked into it, nobody really remembered um, mm -hmm. because it's been so long since Charlie. anybody had done it. Probably. Probably. So Charlie. they probably have all yeah. the old ones still sitting right. there and they were still using them. Yeah. I think in one of the earlier ones, I, I had pictures of the tools and they had blue, no, they had white markers, mm -hmm. white ones, excuse me, I keep wanting to say blue, uh, and they had maybe one or two. So whoever is going to be coming up for wetland markers. They're going to be our trial because I think they're going to need to get all new carcinite markers, all new decals, the whole new procedure. Do they have any markers left? Do you know? I think I, he only found one or two. Oh, okay. So um, they might still be use looking, them on the road. but so it's a good opportunity, to, yeah, to, good opportunity to figure this out. And and you were dealing with um, um, Bob Piccinotti. Who's that? Uh, he works on the highway. He's the highway clerk. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've never had to deal with him. All right. Okay, so so we have an opportunity here since we're sort of, you know, there's, they don't have any to uh, come up with this. All right, so good. Uh, maybe we'll get it on the agenda for the workshop in mm -hmm. September, and hopefully we'll make some progress. You'll submit something to us before then. Yes. Great. All right. Anything else on wetland markers? Okay. How about we take a five-minute break to go over the minutes that we've got in our packets, and Mark can leave. Mike probably can't. Yeah, can or can't. You don't need me for this. I don't yet. know. Probably not. I don't think you do. <laughs> 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 All right, we're taking a turn. A motion to, okay, sorry. Tell me when, George. Go. All right, so I make a motion to come back from break. I'll second. Aye. 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 All right, it's unanimous. Good. Okay, so we are at the, in the administrative section of our meeting, the review of draft minutes on the agenda. Um, we have the February 7th, March 7th, and May 9th. Let's take it from the oldest first um, in the hopes of getting them done in that manner. The February 7th, the version... So my understanding is that your February 7th minutes, the February 7th minutes were actually passed by you guys um, at some meeting that I was not at, probably the June meeting that I was not at. Um, subject to some changes I think that Rich wanted. Right, Noreen? No, Rich had a change on the March. Okay. So the problem that I had was that I had previously given you my revisions to the February 7th minutes, and, and I don't remember when I gave them to you guys, but um, I had I redlined some of it um, with some changes, but I had never finished it, and I had asked you guys to take a look at it because I had serious concerns because I had found so many things wrong with them. Um, so, so what you have before you is what I had given everyone, which w I had redlined, um, and you'll see there are significant changes. But you'll see it stops on page three, and they're not numbered the pages, um, because that's the amount of hours that I had. I did, had no more time left to keep going. And what you guys, I think approved was their original form. So that means that my changes were never incorporated and no one, everyone else thought the way she wrote it was fine, which concerns me. So I had asked that you guys maybe look at it again, at least the version that I gave you, and then look at the rest of it to make sure all is well. Like, like for instance, if you go to, let's see, let's just number them quickly. One number your pages, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if you look on page six, you notice we have a sentence that just starts in the middle? Yeah, hmm. and that was kind of my problem because I tried to look at the videotape, yes. and it did not seem to belong to that meeting at all. But I thought we had uh, said that this whole section needed to be redone at one of the other meetings. Right. So, so I don't know what to do with February 7th because 
um, I'm not sure what you guys adopted. I'm not sure it was in great shape, whatever you adopted. And I know what you adopted didn't include any of my changes. So I know at the very least, the, very, the, the, the first sections were awful. So I don't know what to do. I'm not really sure what to do here. What um, I can do is go back to all the videos and make sure that whatever changes were given on top of these, go through them again, and then send out another version. Yeah, because right now I, I think we really need another version because there was info that was missing on page six. Right. Um, I'm assuming, then, yeah, you picked up Then there were on things on page six and seven that I don't know where in the world they came from, but I don't think they came from that meeting. Yeah. Okay, I can go back and do that. Yeah, I, I think you're going to need to. Um, look, you. I sent you my red line. That comes out for, blue for in these. my print. So you've got them here, but obviously a completely different version was reviewed by this board without me, and they asked for changes to be made as well. So. They kind of got to all come together, and then we know based on what Mary is saying, something went awry here. So, okay. Um, I will take care of that and yeah. get it back out to everybody as soon as possible. Yeah, it's weird. Like, like when you see page six. Yeah. We were discussing Malik Stern, and then all of a sudden it jumps into Glenwood Mikva. Right. Well, it, that, yeah, it, it goes back to Isaac's discussion of what the master plan is going to be. Right, and that has to do with Glenwood too, from or the Mikva. I'm not sure which, but I yeah, it's original. just weird. Now this could be. Look, we Is know that I, I've discussed this before. That sometimes when the videotape gets posted, it's in segments. And George has explained, you know, you know, do the length of the video. You might have three different videos for one meeting. If they're not up there in order where they're not labeled, you know, one, two, and three or something like that. Sometimes they're out of order. And so maybe when she prepared these, she did it from the videotape, Kate meaning, and it, maybe it got jumbled up. Okay, I'll see what I can find in the computer as the original. Well, look, you should have the audio in right. the computer system somewhere. Who knows if you ever find it. Well, I but did find a file that said audio the other day. Right, good. But they weren't labeled, so I have to go on and find yeah, out that's what nightmare. each one is. You might be better off looking at the videotape. They, actually, this recorder, it is easy yeah. because this picks up me say. picking up a piece of paper. I don't know if you know what I'm going to say. Okay, but. Anthony would like to say something, and I'm going to guess, but go ahead. First, well, say it. I think maybe some version control on this. I see that in the footer we have the date of the minutes, which is good, but maybe also in the footer we can put either a version number or a version number and a date or a version so we know what the last one we reviewed well was. that's the purpose of the footer the footer it's never there's never more than one version per date and so the point of the footer was to be that at all times we put down which draft is this is the february 23rd well, draft right so it would be well february okay of these minutes yeah okay. and then if if mary had if you guys had asked for revisions at a different meeting to this one, it okay. would say next to it. Right. it would get the next well, draft date. Well, that's my point, but I yeah. I'm correct. And it's supposed to be page numbered as well. But I retract my comment. Yeah, well, th that but was I the purpose it of it. The yeah. unfortunate yeah. part was we had a lot of trouble getting it done. So we want to continue with that. So the next version that, that Noreen makes should be the August version, and it would say that in the right. footer. Okay. Okay, so Noreen, you know what you got to yep. do. Sadly, we have not moved anywhere on February 7th. Okay, so let's go to March 7th. Which we see is the draft 4-2, which was revised on 6-6 and then revised on 6-30. All right? Uh-huh. Okay. Did everyone have a chance to review this? This is the one prepared actually by Barbara Singer that um, I actually took a stab at revising just because I, I didn't really have the time, but I did it. And then um, I did a couple of revisions after the one meeting. Right, where we picked up on a couple of things, right? Right. I have changed that... Um, on the first page that member Triano came in at 745. Right. I changed it from regular to workshop because it was a workshop not a regular meeting. Um, I put in Vaccaro for Anthony being at the meeting that day and voting on the first page. Yeah. Some of them are blue and some of them are red. I have no idea where my computer's printing this way. It tells me it's a red line and then it prints it blue. Okay. The one comment that um, member Triano wanted in there was when you were going into executive session to interview candidates he wanted it noted that he didn't know anything about that until that evening 
and he didn't think it should happen. And he said that at that time, right? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So I put the, he, that was not in the original minutes that were going over, so I had added that after right. the last revision. Again, I changed regular to workshop. Mm -hmm. um, there was a motion made. Was all this redlined? Where, where is that change? Where he says that? Where right on that the top line? of page two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I added it in red, and yep. then um, there was a motion by Chairperson Schwartz to rescind the earlier appointment, Yeah, and it was seconded by Triano and not, I'm sorry, I can't say Gary's last name. Okay. Abergani. 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 Yeah. Abergani. So I changed his name on that. Okay. All right, so the, all of this is, every change was redlined, so we can see them all. The only thing I would say is that um, you have to put it back. I, I disagree. Um, absent member Triano should go back. That's what it should say. And where he came in at 745, they would go there. And that did not happen before I pointed out the fire exits. So it should be, it should go in wherever wherever he actually showed up. It's which on is, page two. Yeah. Which is should, in sequence. That's where it goes. Okay. okay. So it, take out, came in at 745, put back in, absent member Triano. And then what it says is member Triano arrived at 745 on page two because that's when he arrived. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I don't have anything else. I do. Okay. What do you got? Uh, <coughs> I understand you have the motion and then the second, but there was on, uh, on page one. Okay. Yeah. Um, first paragraph, uh, the second full sentence on the bottom there, aware at the meeting before the last town barred. Where is it? Oh, okay, board. I see that. Okay. I know we had discussed this in the past. I swore I had changed it on. Yes. I, 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 I know, know I changed it on a yeah, couple. because there, there are a couple other things I know we, we discussed. All right, as far as that vote where it says motion second, uh -huh. I think the vote should go after where it says Chairperson Schwartz, the majority wants to vote any other discussion. Then I think it should say, I and nay. I think that Okay, should so be that moved. motion up there should go underneath where it says chairperson supports the majority. Wants the vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's Let page draw one. A line. Okay. Um, page two, uh, that first uh, voting thing there, you don't have member McQuaid. Okay. And I believe she voted I to go into executive session. Um, yes, she did because I watched it. Right. And then, again, um, I think the vote was done after Rich arrived, so I think that whole thing with the eyes and the nays should go after he arrived. Which one? Okay. To go into executive session? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, he arrived 745, then executive session here, because you can't say that he didn't want to think to go in if he wasn't here yet. <clears throat> I see that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'll move that up. Yep. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, that about the middle of the page, motion was made by Chairperson Schwartz to rescind the earlier appointment. I think you should just say for Chairperson. Mm -hmm. Earlier appointment for Chair. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify it a little bit. Okay. okay, okay. Nothing on page three. Page four. Uh, near the top, it says, Chairperson Schwartz, during executive session, we can't. Mike Donnelly made a comment right after that. Uh, so you should say, Mike Donnelly, in a matter of fairness to that person, it is a matter of personnel. It should be done in executive session. Since he's our legal counsel, I think it's important that that sentence be included in there. Can you say that again, Mike, okay. Mr. Donnelly, and then what? In a matter of fairness to that person, mm -hmm. it is a matter of personnel. Uh -huh. It should be done in executive session. All right. Okay. Um, and that would go before. Member McQuaid? 
No, that goes no. right after you, Chairperson Schwartz. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, got you. Okay. You want that again, Noreen? Did you get it? Nope, I think I just drew my arrow in the wrong spot. Okay. So after Chairperson Schwartz, during, during executive session, we can, right? Mm hmm and Correct. And then Mr. Delney. Okay. Okay. Uh, then about in the middle of the page, it says Mr. Cusack. That's really John Atzel. Where? Uh, sure. Middle of the page, Mikva Yisroel Amendment. Right. <coughs> and then it says Mr. Cusack. We have made some minor revisions to the plan. Oh, you think that was Mr. Atzel? That was it was. It? it was John Atzel. Okay. Yeah. And the only thing I would add, same section right there. Um, it's the last sentence. It's been approved, comma, and it should be reapproved, because that was a comment he made directly uh, uh, regarding the pump station. It's been approved and what? And it should be reapproved. Okay. Good. Right. Let me know when you're ready for page five. I got that one. Go. Go ahead. Okay, it's not Mr. Walter who says yes. That's near the top of the page. Mm -hmm. That's Mr. Cusack. And probably Cusack distributed? Well, who cares? Someone distributed. One of them did. Uh, Isaac did. Okay. Yeah. And then the sentence right after that, Mr. Walter distributes the report to the members for mm -hmm. the review with the narrative. The narrative was attached to that report. Distributes the report with the narrative? Yes. Okay. Great. Page six was fine. Page seven. <coughs> okay, in about the middle of the page where it says Mr. Cusack. Mm -hmm. And about in the middle of that section, uh, it says 10 feet of impact should have a comma or two feet of impact or not discernible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just think you need comma in there. Okay, going down towards the bottom of the page, again it says Mr. Cusack. That's not uncommon in, in this town, mm -hmm. correct. Page eight was fine. Page nine, um, just past the middle of the page, Mr. Cusack. Okay, the third line, and the aquifer yield varies between the bedrock, not Bedford, uh -huh. bedrock. And. <clears throat> How do we spell aquifer? It's aquifer. Aqua? Okay. I don't know, actually. I was going to ACQ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's going to have to be a spell so check. You do a global spell check yeah. on that. <coughs> I always feel like it's at ACQUIF. I, that's what I think. There's an I in there it's somewhere. I, uh, aquifer. But yeah, look that up. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, page 10. Mm -hmm. Near the bottom of the page where it says Mr. Cusack. Mm -hmm. No, it's actually statewide statistics. A oh, okay. Or a statewide statistic. Statewide statistics. Statewide statistic. Period. The stations are. Uh, because Ward had asked specific locations, and um, he was giving the exact location of the stations. Okay, so I'm sorry, you want to say no, it's actually what? No, it's actually statewide statistic, period. The stations are... Oh, the st oh so we're not adding an S. Right. The stations are... The One in Montgomery, Port Jervis, and West Point. The stations are... One in Montgomery... Do you want a colon there? Stations are colon. One in Montgomery, Port Jervis, and West Point. No? I don't think he was speaking that way, but okay. <laughs> grammatically it's probably correct. <coughs> okay, fine. 
Okay. 11 was fine. Mm -hmm. 12. Uh, the second paragraph, Mr. Cusack. The second line, placement of the Mountainville. Not, yeah. it, it's not Mount Well, it's, it's Mountainville. Mountainville. It's Mountainville Well, isn't it? Yep. Well, we're taking out the word Mount and putting the word Mountainville in there. Yeah. Replacing it. Okay, the last line under Mr. Cusack. Uh, the L E L L property. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the Oliveri. Oh. O L I V E R I. Okay. Going down to Mr. Etzel on that page. One, two, three. Fourth line from that section, running between Mikva and over to the county. You have to add the word county. Manhole cover. Mm, okay. Fourth line on, on, from the bottom. Oh. Okay. Run, running between Mikva and over to the county manhole cover. Mm -hmm. Page 13. Near the top, Mr. Donnelly. Uh, last line, the Glenwood 2 school. That's a typo there. Mm -hmm. Okay, 14's fine, 15 is fine, 16. Now I know we discussed this because it regards to Jay Beaumont. Yeah. It, his name is spelled B-E-A-U-M-O-N-T. Okay. And that's a couple of times on this page, so if you just kind of Too do a global uh -huh. search for that, I got one, two, three, four, four. Can you spell for his last name again? B e a u. Yep. M o n t. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I've got like five or six. Okay. And got the it. other name that's here is Lee Burgess. Yeah. B e r g u s. Okay, near the bottom of the page, it says, Mr. Etzel, every applicant that comes in has the approval of Orange County Department of Health. I don't know if you want to go much further than that. Lee Burgess, now Jay Beaumont, I just looked, is vice president, not president. I'm sure he would love the promotion, but <laughs> as long as Google is correct, so it's a vice president. And again, Lee Burgess is uh, mentioned towards the bottom of that page. Uh, page 17, we have a couple of Lee Burgesses that have to be fixed. Was it actually Jerome talking? He was there that meeting, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember him speaking. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit above the middle of the page, it starts with Mr. Donnelly. I don't know if they have the expertise in the water issue. Okay. The middle of that uh, paragraph there. Which one? Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay. It's not a tot. It's two night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, a little bit past the middle, it says Mr. Etzel, David Church is very knowledgeable with a lot of the activities that have occurred, processes that the county undertakes in reviewing the application and is on the water side. Lee Burgess would be a help. Those two guys, and then it should be comma, Lee Burgess and Dave Church could be invited. If you just spell processes correct? and put a period between Waterside and Lee Burgess. Okay. I'm 
sorry, what you? I didn't catch both of yours. Waterside. The word says Waterside Lee Burgess. Right. The period in between Waterside and Lee Burgess. Got it. And processes <coughs> mm -hmm. needs to be spelled correctly. Mm hmm Yeah, I didn't catch that one. That was good. Um, page 18. <coughs> Excuse me. Discussion of draft minutes. Here we go. February 7th, January 31st, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You should include a line in there. Rich and Jerome did not review their assigned minutes. Lisa handed in her revisions to order at the meeting. Um, minutes. Then we should add something that minutes were tabled till next planning board meeting, Min minute approval tabled till next planning board meeting. Did, uh, did it happen to say which was Elisa's assigned minutes? Which oh, date? it did. I didn't yeah. write it down. That could be helpful, but I think, because I, I remember at the next meeting when we decided to punt on all the other ones but for Elisa's because we, we had her revisions. You had hers, yeah. But that you can look up. That's in the third video <laughs> near the end. Yeah. Because there's four videos for oh, this I know. one. This one was long. This one was very long, yeah. And um All right, so I have Rich and Jerome didn't did not review their assigned. Lisa minutes. handed her changes in and what else did you say? And the approval of the minutes was tabled. Oh, okay, thank you. Until the next planning board meeting. A signature line there or respectfully submitted. You can simply say minutes prepared by by Barbara Singer temporary recording secretary. How about that? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. It's a lot of changes, but nothing all that substantive. No. Do we, we want to s like those. approve them pending the changes uh, as amended? Mm -hmm. And then it would just be up to us to make sure that it actually gets done. <coughs> yeah? So I'll like make that. a motion that we approve the minutes as revised. Approve the March 7th minutes as um, we have asked for revi as revised tonight. Yeah. And you're making that motion. I'm seconding it. Aye. 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 Just gives me such a thrill. <laughs> it really does that we got done with one. Okay. As amended, but it has to get done. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So, Noreen, please put it on our joint calendar to make sure that that gets done. All right. So, we're at 9.30. I'm giving it another five minutes, and then we're out of here. You have bills to sign. Uh, yeah, but that's that's just me, not that. Okay. All, All right. right. So, May 9th. May 9th, I don't have a lot of Okay. corrections, additions. And I have a couple. Okay. Um... So on page four, at the very top, the second line, Chairperson Schwartz explained that part of the planning board's willingness to proceed with this project, given the circumstances, was that, so you have to put in was, was that they provide a master plan, or the applicant provide a master plan. So it should say, given the circumstances, given the circumstances, was that they provide a master plan. Okay. okay? And then... <coughs> Okay, same page four, go down under Mountainville, second paragraph to the last, where it says, Chairperson Schwartz, we are only an interested agency. Uh -huh. This is your conversion issue from first person to third person. Right. should say, Chairperson Schwartz noted, the planning board is only an interested agency. So you take out we are. Um, I guess we can leave in the what's our evidence to challenge it. That, again, it's a first person, but I can live with it. Um... So you guys know, so when she started, she was writing everything as like verbatim first person, but then going back and forth between like summary, third person, it was kind of crazy. So we tried to just make it all the third person, but some of it's sort of dragged over. Okay, page five, minutes. All right, and this was your cleanup of, of kind of a crazy section here. So January 31st, 2017, 
I think what you're saying there is the January 31st minutes, but the February 22nd draft? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so then we need to say that. January 31st minutes. Um, I believe that's what I meant. I don't yeah. think this is this notebook. I think it's my other. Yeah, that's in my other notebook because this one's later on. And so maybe we should say you say January thirty first two twenty two thousand seven minutes. Put a call, put a hyphen in then, and then it would say the twenty two. <coughs> and be consistent. Use either use slashes or spell out. Okay. Um. So the February twenty second, two thousand seventeen draft, not minutes, right? Mm hmm. The last version once changes made approval to post. I think. In your in your shorthand, that means the 222 draft was the last version, and changes need to be made. And once they're made, then you can post them. You need to go back and look and see what your what your okay. shorthand meant. I'll read because this. this is not English. That makes Watch sense. again. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, but I think that's what we were getting at. We probably <coughs> had some changes, and once those changes were made, you they were approved to be posted. I. Do we make them? I don't even know. Do we make a motion? I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh yeah, change person motion to approve is amended. Huh. Okay. So yeah, you need to look at that line and I make will. it make sense. Mm -hmm. But then where it says chairperson Schwartz motion to approve is amended. Um, chairperson Schwartz made a motion. Okay. Period. To approve as amended. Period. Member Bingham seconded. Period. Motion granted. Period. Right? And then I, and then you know mm -hmm. that. Okay. The July 12th, 2016, I think minutes is what you're saying? Yes, they were up on the website. Were, and they were, not was, were up on the website with the wrong design attached. We need to get design two and repost them to the website. Okay, so it's July 12th, 2016, mm -hmm. minutes, were. Mm -hmm. Okay. October 4th, 2016, minutes have not yet been posted. They've never been circulated after extensive change. I still haven't time. found them. Noreen is searching the office. Okay. I still have. But they were emailed. I'm pretty sure. With the changes? I think so. I felt like. Because you had me check in the drawer and the boxes. Oh, because Mary, you probably handed them in. Do you remember if you <coughs> handed them to her I or if you emailed them? In. Oh, we're screwed. I there was that one big box of all the minutes that you that we were all just sticking yeah. the minutes in. That's where they are. Do all right, I'll go back in the, it, There's one box under my under the shelf unit. It was not under. It was on the shelf. We might have moved I it to under the. Uh, I thought it was floor. under the desk when we moved it over. To I the have desk. two I under my desk. Is. They're very good footrests right now. <laughs> yeah, there's one box where every time we found minutes that she had just stuffed someplace, we put it in one box just so mm -hmm. we would know where to look. I'll go back That's into that where one. You're looking. March <coughs> seven. Let's make it consistent again. Mm -hmm. 2016 minutes. Right. No, 17. So, I'm sorry, 2007. Really? I don't know that. Oh, oh yes. The ones we just 17 did. 17 minutes, yes. And then, the, right, and then the have these are done by Barbara. Add Singer after Barbara. Mm uh hmm. -huh. Okay. The next line Chairperson Schwartz made a motion to approve the March 30, 2017 17 minutes, period. Remember, I'm going to seconded, period. Motion, motion passed. passed. Okay. March 30. What's that? We had a special March. meeting. What was it? We had a special meeting. That's why. Okay. Chapter information approved. April fourth minutes with corrections. Member Amy is second. Okay, so Chairperson Schwartz made a motion to approve April fourth. Member Amy is second. Period. Yep, I put it in. Okay. Brief discussion Catch regarding on. temporary chair. <laughs> period. Got that brief discussion regarding temporary chair. Period. Uh -huh. Capitalize will. Okay. So. Mary, do you have any comments? Yeah. yeah. Go. Yeah. Page one. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Five lines up from the bottom. Bottom. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Issues arise, Mr. Maldonado. I think you should say building inspector because it almost sounds like, you know, 
he as a person is going to do some enforcement, but you need the words building inspector in there. Mm -hmm. So the comma, building inspector, comma would have greater. Right. Um, I guess this is a, a style. Open discussion regarding the walls. Uh, it's on page two. It happens twice. I don't know if you want to use that or discussion ensued or if, you, if you're happy with open discussion regarding the walls. How about the planning board discuss re the walls and climbing vines? I, yeah, yeah, I think that might be a little bit better. The planning board discussed the walls and climbing and the climbing vines. Okay. And that's also near the bottom? Yeah. Um, second from the bottom, open discussion on the proper way to post. I was, there was a discussion. Yes, there was a discussion on the proper way. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, going back up to that first paragraph uh, okay. on page two, uh, the second line was on top of or in front of parapet and the size of the batter. Oh, that's okay. I, Where were we? It, I don't it's know. okay. It doesn't matter because batter is the, the correct term. I looked that up. Yeah, we had to look that up. Yeah. I called the engineer. Yeah, we called him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I did it that. A cake <laughs> okay, on page two, just jumping in. Page two, look at your, um, in the middle of the page, June 13, 2017. Mm hmm. Okay, circle 13. And then also look at the bottom where you see June 6. Something's going on with your word processor. Figure that out. June 13, you got a, a comma, but then you got a weird, funky, like, colon thingy in there. And oh. I have no idea what you're doing. It's like a ampersand. Kind I of don't thing. know what that is, but it's in both places, and it okay, shows see up it. in other ones too. I will watch okay. for it. Go ahead, Mayor. <coughs> okay, um, going back to that um, second, there was a open discussion on the proper way to post a notice for the public mm -hmm. hearing. Um, I think a sentence needs to be added that the. Minutes needed to reflect the village of Monroe, Harriman, village of Carrisdale, and Woodbury would be included as interested agents. You mean the notice would have to be included? No. Why would the minutes? No, there. You were talking about the public hearing, right. and, and then it came up who was included is an involved agency or is an to be received to receive the notice. I think so. That might be the case. Because it wouldn't be in the minutes. It would be. <coughs> in I was concerned. That, I was concerned that we get the notice to the right people. Right. So okay. I, the the notice probably should have been worded in a way that not not the notice, but the the notice itself was sent to those. There was discussion on the proper way to post to. to to post notice for the public to hearing. To post the notice for the public hearing and that the village which municipality is, and yeah, go ahead. And that the village of Monroe, village of Harriman, village of Kiris Joel, as well as Woodbury would be included as interested agencies. Would receive it as interested agencies? Would, okay. That would be that? better. Would receive it as interested agencies. Okay. Page three. And it's one, two, third paragraph from the bottom. As to note number six. Okay, the second sentence there, and the well, second line, excuse me, and the requirement in, we're going to add, in note number two. Was not lifted. Was not lifted yeah. and should be corrected. And then you have to add after corrected to be consistent with the language of the ZBA decision. Mm -hmm. Good. On that page. Mm -hmm. Do you want to look at the next paragraph down and add sanitary before pump station? Any private sanitary pump station? Okay. 
Oh, so do you want sanitary? Okay, I found it. Yep, go ahead. Do you want to distinguish? I know it's contextual, but between CO certificate of occupancy and CO carbon monoxide. Where is it? Well, on that page, on the middle of the at the end, at the middle paragraph at the end, CO is for right, certificate of, of occupancy. It be C of L. Right. And C on the first page, uh, no, sorry. On the second page, um, where it says where CO, CO hot, hot spot. Yep. that's carbon monoxide. Let's just say carbon monoxide there. There's two times in that paragraph and the next paragraph down. Got that, Noreen? Yep. Good. So carbon monoxide instead of CO mm -hmm. on page two in the two spots. Yep. And C of O on page three. three. Right. Okay, yeah. good. And on page one, minor typo, but the uh, the third paragraph up, OCDPW. Uh, Sorry. Well, actually, no. It is Orange no. County Department of Planning. No, because, and it's not DP, though, it's PD. Orange County Planning. Not on their no? paperwork. Department okay. of Planning. Wow, okay, good. so that's what she meant there then. I had already asked her that. Right, so and that I double checked the pa yeah, I double checked the paperwork. Okay, okay, good. Sorry then. <coughs> no, right, that's great. fine. Mary, were you done or no? Um not quite. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, the second we're going back to page three. Um Okay, it would be the last line. Plans are adequate for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. It should say Mark Etzel stated that the mm -hmm. plans are adequate. Mr. Etzel. Mr. Uh -huh. Etzel stated, right. Okay. Okay, and the sentence right before where we just made that correction. Uh, it starts department if a health hazard or if an emergency the town coat can go on and back charge. Mm -hmm. You have to say the property owner because you're not saying mm -hmm. who you're going to charge. Okay. Yeah, so it's the property owner. Okay, got that. Page four. Third line from the top. Board's willingness to proceed with this project given the circumstances was. Right, I have that in there. Okay. Yeah, I read it that one. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, a little bit past the middle. It says Member Bingham brought up that some of the projects before us. I, the planning board. It should say the planning board, yeah. Yep. That's a third person, third person. Uh, indicate that there might be getting water from Karis Joel at some point in the future, period. Capital I. Mm -hmm. If the water is coming from the Mountainville wells and there is an environmental impact, why did we approve the project, comma, but if it comes, not came, but comes, from the New York City aqueduct, there might not be any environmental impact. Okay. All right. Uh, the next section there, Mr. Donnelly explained if someone wants to challenge the negative declaration, there is a determination that there are no adverse environmental impacts of using that well. That forecloses unless someone wants to do something about that and then insert using that as an issue. I think it would be about that comma, using that as an issue. Okay. Right? And then it says, um, next line down, Chairman, Chairperson Schwartz noted. Uh-huh. And that would be it. I think all the others or addressed by Audra. Okay. All right. Motion to approve the May 9th minutes as revised. I'll, I'll second. Aye. 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 Yay. Aye. Okay. Just giddy with happiness. Motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry. On the, I need to go back to February. Yep. Minutes.
It says that planning board members accident it doesn't list me. And then where well, we were talking about how it gets confusing where there's just yeah. it starts in the middle of the page on page six. There's a couple of like on page seven in the middle of the page it says member of the was absent. So I don't know. Yeah. Was I absent? Was I there? And that's not Good the point. time that it says when the quake is absent. On page eight. Wait, wait, hold on. You're going really fast. Sorry. So wait, February seven it says you're present. And then what? It says so she's absent. Page seven. seven. Page seven. Okay. So it should be in number four, Goldberger Building Fifty Four. Hold on, I don't even have page seven. I got a number six, seven. So then page seven it says what? Remember McKay was absent. Right, in Goldberger. Right. But we don't know if you were absent. Maybe right. you left. It doesn't say that. Uh, yeah, who knows? Front, in the, on the front page. Good point. And yeah. then on page eight, the fourth paragraph down, mm -hmm. and the last sentence again, Member McQuay was absent. So, yeah. Uh, the two more paragraphs down, the last sentence, yep. Member McQuay left. So I'm not even sure. Yeah. Was I absent or was I not? I don't know. Or is this a merging of two different. Yeah. Well, that's one I'm going to rewatch, so I will double check that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you were probably there at the February 7th. I wasn't the February 7th. But wherever it is Goldberger, and I'm assuming the other portion is Glenwood, too, uh, I think that's a totally different meeting. Where it says member of the is absent, reading it, it doesn't, it doesn't sound familiar. Right. So I don't think I was at the meeting that says I was absent. Hmm. Huh. It looks like. It is very possible that when I revised it, I messed something up. I'll go it's back good. to the it's original possible. and see what's going on. Yeah, all right. Well, we got two out of three. Okay, yeah. terrific. The, the one thing that I have to wonder is if when you look at the May 9th, is it May 9th? You know, at the end of the administrative section, mm -hmm. um, whether we got any of this stuff done. Okay, I'll double check everything. You know, so, so I know later on we went back and we said everything before, or maybe before this, we said everything before that. We were just letting go and just going to stay in draft. But um, I'll go back and listen to the end of it. We were trying to, yeah. Get I'll done, get back to so. you on it definitely. All right, motion to adjourn. Oh crap! Oh. Thank you, Nori. Seconded. Right. Who seconded it? All second. And unanimously, aye. Yes. All right.